You are listening to an audio file provided by the Free Internet Culture Organization. Staniza Augers, Zainaga, Ayano Chindi, Dawn Van Pham Basami Single Quote Z, Princess Yuki Nyan, Titan Kronos 9, Dorothy Kirilova, Yunus Ria Chikawa, Mogani Ko Shin Kim Kyu Jong Oska, Bogdanescu Anki Maria, Sina Kaminiwa, Sajuke Uchicha. Dedicated in memory of my grandmother. Irene who died in 2002, may God bless her and give her a peaceful rest. Blaze Master Eternal War Written between 2011 to 2012 With the help of my friends Matthew 16 28 A circumflex I can guarantee this truth Some people who are standing here will not die until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. A circumflex a circumflex a circumflex one distant star that shines with the power of God, celebrating the life in the universe, home to warmth. One distant star that shines so far away in space, engulfed in the cold darkness spreading its warmth to planets, every plant and every animal carries Ida's light in its own core. Oh the distant star I send you a prayer from the coldest depth of universe is a beloved creation of God made to resemble him please continue to give us the warm we need. A circumflex A circumflex A circumflex I dedicate this work of fiction to our beloved creator master of all that is seen and unseen the one that is watching over us from the past and continues even today. The creator of our free will. The true master, God. May the light of knowledge and love be fall on us living. May we be blessed in participating in your holy work and may my small and insignificant attempt at describing your glory. May the small fiction world be blessed from the heavens and continue under your divine inspiration. I want to dedicate this work to the Father and Son and to the Holy Spirit. I ask you for help and guidance. I also ask you to acknowledge the works of our minds and heart in your favor. A circumflex a circumflex a circumflex in the times of ancient evil 106 chosen people will save the world. Chapter 4. A circumflex the manifestations of Gotha. In a distant and closed reality distortions appeared, creeks fueled up with blood. The red substance like magma created dark smoke, which steamed with incredible force and pressure. The temperature reached its incredible climax, creating a powerful pressure that fused with incredible masses of air, created a terrifying spectacle. Blue particles of energy appeared in the smoke, small silver-blue lightings flashed, brightening up the gray mass. A huge force was being set in motion as the pressure forced whirlpools into creation mixing, both cold and hot winds, creating an explosive tornado's making brown rocks fall from the surrounding dark brown cave walls. These rocks mixed into into the tornado, ripping the winds and releasing incredible brightly yellow energy into distance, causing a huge roar to manifest itself. The display was accompanied by powerful light filling the area. The cave walls were dry from constant heat that was applied by this phenomena. In these dangerous surroundings caves were dug up by an ancient culture and a huge amount of people was working nearby. All dressed in gray, destroyed dirty cloths. Digging with simple primitive rock utilities into the hot magma. Exhausted from the heat. Their gray faces shone traces of physical drama and countless abuses these people suffered. Exhausted by the heat of the magma and these explosions that took place above their heads, blinding them with bright light some of these people would simply fall into the lake, slowly get engulfed in reddish flames and die in this agony. For most of them that was the only way to escape this terrible labor, their bones became dark during their lives making them feel this incredible agony. The fire killed them in few seconds. These that wished to remain alive were gathered in small groups and were forced into eternal labor. Putting their rocks into the fire lake, gently touching in as if using a spoon trying to take away its magma, once this hard task was done, the person holding the rock spoon, which was simply a huge grayish spiky rock, slowly stood up and walked back upwards into the small rising where dark knights were standing and a huge dark pot was located in the middle of each two knights. 
the person holding the rock spoon and slice of magma on top of it was to dump the magma into the pot, returning below to the magma lake. The purpose of these people gathered near the fire lake was to harvest fire from that lake. The dark knights looked like stereotypical representations of demons, all wearing almost theatrical metal masks covering their eyes. Looking like statues, in fact being statues that were embedded with dark reddish energy, which was used to control them. Symbols appeared on their mosaic surface, showing green goblin faces. This was the program that was used to control them. This was a structure of dark caves surrounded by mazes created by the magma lakes and creeks. Impenetrable prison and a factory of some sort. All this was observed by a yellow-haired and blue-eyed woman, who seemed to be dressed in a brightly gold uniform. Gently correcting her hairs, she continued to gaze upon the captured people. Looking at her silver trump tied up to her waist, this was her means of calling help. Hearing the growls of the energy winds being created, touching her golden armor that covered almost her entire keist. Breathing a bit harshly in this hot environment and trying to control her vision, also being exhausted from the pressure. She standed in a safe spot above the whole scene, but was threatened by the constant explosions of energy. Blinded each time it happened, trying to hide in the hole made in the cave wall, she used to observe the situation. From her spot she could see many craters, in every crater a fire lay created from orange magma that carried energy particles in IT. Around each fire lake a crowd of people digging into the lake's border and taking small, tiny bits of the lakes carrying them, like small ants. The place was similar to beehive. People digging at the fire lake, being bees that carry food for the queen. Billions of craters like billions of honey plasters in a hive. This was a hive of energy that was used for Gallimald's evil ambitions. The woman picked up her trumpet and blown into it creating a silver-blue energy sphere that engulfed her slowly and small lightings started to engulf the sphere as it rotated, very fast, flashing and engulfing the woman who stood up inside it, not being terrified. The sphere created a huge flash of light and disappeared. The sphere appeared in the middle of a silver road in a different dimension, fading away and freeing the woman as she slowly walked forward looking around the place. Observing the chaotic structure, composite of bizarre and misplaced surroundings. Walking in the middle of distortions. Above her a dark blue sky was located, looking as if it was badly drawn and paint was falling down on the silver floor. From these blue creeks eyes could be seen looking at the woman, she slowly walked observing the silver road that started to divide into numerous smaller paths, which themselves lead to a huge distorted vortex. Staircases that lead to nowhere, were located inside the vortex. The road itself shined in white aura, indicating purity and the vortex started shaping itself slowly, restoring a blurred image from which blue light appeared. The image restored shone a gate and it suddenly very slowly appeared allowing the woman to enter the gate. She slowly stepped inside the huge golden gate and was transformed into a beautiful blue sly world. Under her feet green grass with red flowers, a breeze touched her cheeks gently messing up her hair. Now the woman was walking on a planet. In the middle there was a blue lake located covered and encircled by a huge forest and the field she found herself walking in as she neared some old ruins where others were sitting. A huge crowd was gathered, composed of gods and their servants from all over the universe, talking and debating the current crisis, some of them again like children playing on the beach and in the water, appearing to be oblivious to threat that was created by the current events, others were just talking while sitting, drinking, tea, cough or wine. Few sat tensely and were worried by the current events. The woman walked over to the huge white rock near some ancient Greek columns and kneeled down in front of Yahweh who was sitting on the rock. The old man looked at his servant and smiled, jumping down from the rock and walking over to her. A circumflex so how did it go? A circumflex, he asked looking at her, seeing her kneeling down and standing to him in her golden uniform looking like a royal guard, which she was a circumflex it is as you suspected my lord, works have resumed in that place, 
Calamuth is trying to harvest that power again, uh, she replied looking straightly in Yahweh's face and continued after taking a breath they circumflex only this time it's happening on a massive scalia. She ended looking at him straightly as he made his way past her, touching her shoulder a circumflex I know what he's up to dear Gabriel, he's preparing a war, a war on gods and we should made our preparations as well. Yahweh explained and walked down the lake looking at the gods who started to observe him curiously. The gods and goddesses looked at Yahweh some with bizarre expression on their face. The sun shined brightly from above and the beautiful blue sky was fueled with white clouds that didn't cover it, creating a peaceful sight. It was warm, making everyone feel relaxed and calm as they continued to look at Yahweh. Their hearts started beating fast suddenly while Yahweh continued his speech which was of great importance to the gods. The sun continued to shine on the gathered, sharing its warmth and love. Love is always described as a warm feeling, and thoughts how goodness become synonymous with light and darkness become hate. Cause darkness is nothingness and refers to no love. Hate is simply understood as lack of love as it became its opposite. However not feeling love to somebody doesn't single quote t necessarily mean we hate them. So what else is necessary to constitute hate? Not only lack of emotions but also a very negative attitude that represents the opposite of things one does for these that they love. We protect the loved one and endanger these that we hate. Gods and goddesses who all appeared on this small beach in their human forms all had people in other gods they hated or loved, therefore they too were subject to these emotions that were created by the human race. After all gods and goddesses were the creations of human minds which were harvested and made into existence by the spiritual world Echelion to harvest energy from human or demonic thoughts. Echelion created the material world to use it as a source of nourishment. A young goddess named Lydia with black hair and blue eyes smiled. She was dressed in a long white dress with a big diamond on her chest. Her smile was more beautiful than the smiles from the other and she was having a black hat in her arms. She stood up and asked a circumflex what does it mean to live in the spiritual world without love? Isn't love the one that makes us and the humans happy? A circumflex, making Yahweh smile as he walked close Ellie to the girl smiling and looking at her, replying to the question A circumflex love brings both happiness and sorrow, love means sacrificing yourself. It can bring a lot of happiness when two youngsters engage in fashion, but it also brings a lot of pain when a son keeps vigil at his dying mother's bed. Both are signs of love but love, but it's a different love. To live without love can also mean to try to escape from something that is too hard to bear. Yahweh explained looking at the girl slowly a circumflex but the question is can we live without love ya? Yahweh continued asking his questions and she replied a circumflex you talk about the love between humans but what about us? Can a goddess like me love someone? And if yes what does it mean to love someone who won't live with you forever? Won't I feel lonely without that person? A circumflex she comes near him and shows him her hand a circumflex this hand isn't different from a human's hand but it can kill and give life. Why can't I find love then? A circumflex Yahweh looked at her a circumflex our laws forbid mixing of species to avoid problems like that. This is a reason a young inexperienced goddesses are forbidden to love mortal man. We placed these rules so you won't get hurt by the sight of you a love one dying. Because we are destined to exist for a vera, Yahweh walked away and seated on the white rock and looked at the inexperienced goddess a circumflex still you are forbidden to love a mortal man until you understand what true love is. Once you're ready you will no longer experience sadness by losing someone. We are immortal and these that died become one of us. Once you finish you learning you'll know when the man whom you love may come to your realm or is he even ready to accept a goddess as his partner? Yahweh replied looking at Lydia who seemed to look at him a bit nervously. Lydia looked away and said, Why can't we fall in love with a god? And why do I have to be a goddess and not a human? What if I live this life and go to be a human? Will I be killed? A circumflex she asked looking sadly while Yahweh laughed at a circumflex Oh dear child who said you cannot love a god like yourself. Nobody forbids us to love each other and humans. You must understand that these regulations are suggestions to keep us safe.
Not all of them need to be obeyed. Sometimes certain gods or goddesses go too far with these restrictions from pride. You yourself need to understand which rules should be obeyed and which shouldn't. When learning you need to first ask your own heart which restrictions are good and which are bad. We two are a gathering of both gods that serve the light and these that serve darkness. Some rules are meant to enslave even us and it requires wisdom to know for what purpose they were imposed my dear. Yahweh replied again trying to calm down the young goddess. The goddess looked at him sadly. Why didn't I feel love for a god from here then? Why am I all alone? A circumflex, she asked sorrowfully. Yahweh looked at her seriously and walked towards her, batting her arm. A circumflex, are you lonely? You cannot force love. It's a very unpredictable feeling it appears when you're ready. That is when you will be in love, only then you will know why you weren't able to feel it before you. Yahweh replied and looked around the gathered dot some water that formed on the grass was falling down slowly hitting the ground dot making a quiet noise that calmed the atmosphere. The water in the lake was slowly flowing towards the ground as well, touching it delicately while being splashed by some gods who carelessly played in water. The wind blown slowly carrying a strange and magical song. A young goddess stood in the center of the gathered and accompanied by a chorus, from few heavingly maidens sung a strange ancient beatiful song, which was a prayer familiar to the one sung by Ua. Elements of nature were gathered and worshipped as another spell was invoked during the meeting. This happened during the conversation the goddess named Lydia had with Yahweh. Zeb smirked looking at the young goddess amused. Thinking about the words she said, wondering why would one waste his time on love. Being a corrupted dark angel himself, who in the past betrayed and murdered his companions, he couldn't understand the pain the young goddess felt instead preferring to correct his golden attire and looking into the dark god Beelzebub he chose to worship and follow. Beelzebub, Zub's master was the god of money, corruption and greed. A god who feared Calumet's wrath and just punishment for his crimes, but Beelzebub was born from greed and avarice the world had and therefore constituted only the incarnation of every single greedy thought rather than being the creator of greed. The same was true with other gods which represented emotions and thought energies made by humans. In truth gods are created by humans and they represent their convictions sometimes even evolving from humans after being pissed by these energies themselves. Gods and goddesses how beautiful they were, were only tools used by Echelion and therefore, shouldn't be worshipped, yet as ever beings desiring authority they themselves create in their cults. Thus gods and goddesses were corrupt, spoiled and evil to some extent, yet among these spoiled and corrupt politicians there were few truly devoted to their cause and used their powers to guide the human race, rather than enslaving them. One of these gods was Yahweh who himself was a human. He became the ultimate priest-like figure and in power fell patriarch to whom many look up to. Other gods became patriarchal figures themselves as well not always misusing their powers. Because they were gods that served either the light or the dark side, this gathering was a joint gathering of both the dark and the light. For the enemy threatened entire existence. This was a rare occasion, and a very hard alliance. It wasn't easy for gods to put aside their differences and work together for they too were influenced by human emotions that give them their birth. But they gathered together to try to defeat Galimath, the first one that discovered the hidden truths of the world. Galimath was the first among the gods to comprehend the mystical knowledge of the universe, the knowledge that was to remain a mystery forever. This is what we call a mysterium, and mysteriums are supposed to remain a secret. Yet even so many will look for this knowledge thinking it will give them power only to understand how weak they really are, cause that is the curse of the mysterium. The curse that wasn't brought by any divine power, but by mere action some take, before realizing that everything has a consequence, a spiritual price one needs to pay. W.B. all rush of rewards and punishments as parts of this spiritual price. Thoughts why we sometimes suffer for someone else's mistakes, but if it wasn't fair then something positive will come our way. Cause the universe will maintain its balance. The material world is precious to spiritual realm, cause it's a place seeds grow, concepts develop and live on. 
Your world is a factory and a garden that sustain us living in the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm Machelian is like a river that rushes and splashes on the rocks which is your world. But these rocks are important cause mold grows on them, and on this mold traveling fishes feed. Thoughts why rocks in the river aren't a disturbance. These rocks save the fishes from hunger. The humans are precious to gods cause they're the ones that sustain them. By giving their energy and producing ideas which help the universe and the spiritual realm to grow, without that there wouldn't be anything. God created the material world, so we could live out our dreams and evolve, create and give birth to others, other world dimensions. It all starts from a single impulse created by the human brain. In order to succeed with his mad ambition the dark god Galamith needed to cause injury to humans. Gods knew that sooner or later Galamith will try to divide and break the human race. All of the gods were therefore determined to protect the humans. Despite this never spoken, all gods knew this in their hearts. Because not all communication went in spoken language. There were other ways to communicate with each other that the enemy was unaware and Al thought it all looked like nothing was discussed. As gods were playing joking and Yahweh was having a conversation with a young goddess Lydia about love, just as if nothing happened. The true conversation and debate took place spiritually and emotionally. Instantly everything was analyzed, summarized and agreed on, and this all happened even before Yahweh stood up from his place, before joking to Lydia and even before Gabriel entered the new meeting place. It happened in an instant that was the powerful communication gods were capable of. The simple and universal language of thought of energies, emotions and visions. Without even speaking a single world one could communicate and to relay this whole text in a single image, assuming the other could understand the image everything could be said in an instant. That was the form gods could talk of course for them even an image wasn't necessary just a feeling that was recognized, single feeling. That certain one thing described everything in a flash. That was the language gods and spirits used to communicate, but this language was hard to understand for one that wasn't among these gods cause this language also evolved. Of course even for me it's too hard to describe what exactly was it, for you who never experienced it's something hard to understand. But an instant is a instant it does and single quote teach a long, instant is a single glance. Yahweh looked at all gods and all was discussed as he looked on them for an instant. The moment he took notice of gods it was all already discussed and everything was communicated. All reshipped the message and communicated their own, it was over even before it begun. This is the only way I could explain this to you. A silver-haired goddess was sitting in the center of the gathered on an ice throne, a bit above the other gods who were sitting on the yellow sands of the beach she was sitting out of them a young beautiful goddess, her silver hair was bright as the sun. Through her eyes slightly open you could see how cold she looked at the gods. Her dark blue robe appeared black in sunlight. You could feel around her chills driven through other Zoras. She have opened her eyes and looked at Yahweh and said, If the gods are born from people's wishes, why they need love? On her left hand is her crescent bracelet. She brought his hand to her, touched her ring and closed her eyes. She got in harmony with all others gods, and using her telepathic power continues saying, We should love the people, they created us all with their desires they will destroy us if they will lose their faith in us. Yahweh, you were mortal, at least you, from all the gods, should understand how much we'd planned on people. Yahweh walked back a bit and looked at her seriously. Kneeling before her, being something of both a servant and master to these gods, they all depended on his guidance a circumflex it's because I was once human, I understand the weakness of human Sula, he admitted looking away and observing the forest in the distance a circumflex humans have a unique power that gives birth to many wonderful things, it's called creation. It's a power we too inherited from them, humans have the capacity to experience many things. Both pleasure and pain, but they sometimes lack the will to understand it. Yahweh looked up into the cold eyes of the goddess, one of many that was created from human emotions. Hearing the words that Yahweh said the blue eyes of the goddess become black, and her crescent-shaped necklace began to shine. Each god and goddess felt a massive energy coming from the goddess with silver hair. 
they saw how a colorless sphere appeared close to her necklace and grow as big as the lake. She took the sphere in the left hand and said, Look one more time at what people made from their world, from your world Yoe, I'd be grateful to disappear instead of seeing how will it be the end of the world, Lydia, you may have given without to realize the hope and salvation of mortals. The sphere showed mortal world, in her all colors. After a short time, she rose up, raised her hand and the sphere became smaller and smaller till she got in goddess hand and vanished. She glared once again at Yahweh with a cold look then sat back on her throne of ice. Yahweh smiled and walked away from the icy throne, creating a small circle, then doing another one in the sand outside the first one, then creating another and repeating this action till he made nine circles that represented the solar system, he then drawn tiny spheres to represent planets. Yahweh then looked at what he drawn and smiled a circumflex humans are capable of evil thoughts true but, have you ever saw how happy and proud they are when they achieve a goal? Have you ever asked a person named Neil Armstrong, how it felt being overwhelmed by darkness, or Copernicus who was just a bishop, how he figured out this dot a circumflex? Yahweh looked showing the goddess what he drawn in the sand, using his cane. A circumflex go and ask you questions to these two, you'll be surprised at their answer, this is humanity, Yahweh replied and looked seriously in the goddess eyes while continuing a circumflex don't judge them by their weaknesses, they're not weak. There is no one without faults, but our fate ain't predetermined by our faults, but rather by our will to overcome them, this is true for humanity as well as Yahweh ended smiling dot with a cold look the goddess rose and headed to Yahweh. Behind her the ice throne vanished. She stopped few steps far Yahweh and said, You are still a mortal, aren't you? Then smiles of Illy, continuing, Humans made the taboo. Sooner or later they will destroy everything they ever made. They can't trust themselves. They betray, hurt and kill. They may be creators. But in my eyes, touch her earring, they are the same. They destroy everything. Belzebub who was sitting few gods away from the goddess, next to his dark-haired angels of smirked, glaring. The vicious old man looked at Yahweh almost laughing a circumflex poor Yahweh, believing in humans do you? A circumflex, he continued to mock him and stood up, dressed in dark cloth like robes, with golden serpent ornaments. Belzebub remembered the times when he too was mortal, and ruled over may humans. Belzebub was always a ruler, born from the ruler's race, destined to govern humanity, therefore even when he became a god, he still continued to be a ruler. A circumflex not only do people not trust each other, they're also corrupt. This corruption leads the world to the brink of annihilation each time. Even Christ himself was crucified because of the human lust. Poor Yahweh do you really believe in their goodness? A circumflex Belzebub asked mockingly, being proud of himself. Yahweh dressed in similar yet grey cloth like robes, that were a bit mortar, or at least appeared to be mortar, not made from the same precious material Belzebub wore, seated down on the grey rock and looked at Belzebub smiling a circumflex yes my friends I will count on you to believe in the goodness inside the mud. Yahweh replied knowing too well he would be right called by the dark gods but in reality he hold respect among many of them. Bekau of both his uncommon faith in goodness and the incredible, even for a god. Will to help everybody. Thoughts why Yahweh was given the position of the high priest among the gods and goddesses that were just servants and messengers of the real god. As a dark goddess, the young goddess with silver hair looked at the other dark gods with her icy eyes, then once again looked at Yahweh and thought, They are so much alike. Yet he is dead. She went to Yahweh and turned her back in front of him looking at the gods from his place, then said, If this man is enough brave to become a god yet to be immortal in his heart then you dear dark gods are inferiors to him. Then she turned back looking at Yahweh's face, and slightly caressed his cheek with her left hand, then whispered, If mortals could reincarnate, I wouldn't mind him being you, then she returned to the place where stood the throne and made him reappear. Zeb smirked and laughed, his eyes looked at the goddess mockingly, and yet somewhere in his heart he understood why the goddess took Yahweh's side a circumflex is that so? As inferior to him.
Rhinocalus, you all love to waste Chimia, Zub smirked while replying angrily looking at the gods a circumflex were not inferior to anyone. So shut up or it'll make you eat these words sir, Zub expressed trying to stand up only to have a golden sword sticken up to his throat by Gabrielle who walked up towards him, standing in front of him and looking straightly into his eyes a circumflex I suggest you calm down. Gabriel replied looking at him seriously a circumflex you haven't changed at all. We don't need to fight among ourselves. A circumflex she added looking at the dark goddess with respect. Dot the dark goddess looked at Gabrielle and smiled. She raised her hand and in her hand appeared a beautiful necklace with a red powerfully stone, then said to Gabriel, From people's heart hopes, anger, love and faith were born one upon the time two celestial beings. They were cursed and bonded together to have the same fate. If one of them died the other one would die as well. Then sadly touched her necklace, and continued, The two celestial beings were one and the same, yet their powers were opposed to each other. They were created by a small but powerful province, who named them Yin and Yang. Their power was absolute. They have always kept the balance. Till a horrible day came. In the small province came a stranger who named himself as being the god upon the gods. People believed in him and slowly forgot about their beloved gods, letting them less than less than die greater than greater than slowly. Yin, evil, and Yang, good, felt how their powers flowed slowly, and right when they wait to vanish Yang took his sister hand and gave her all the power he had in order for her to survive, and he vanished like he never existed. Weak and she lost her consciousness and when she woke up she was alone in a place with dark material, and she stood there and reborn as a goddess. A goddess who is neither good neither dark, who don't have need of people to exist and give her power. A another kind of god. The goddess rose and went to Gabrielle and put on her neck the collar with red stone saying, This it was the collar that gave to that man power, this is the collar who destroyed the balance, yet I'm giving this to you because I know that sooner or later you will have need of power and no one will help you, as I had need and my brother sacrificed himself for me. Someday, gods and goddess you will vanish with you mortal, but I will exist forever neither feeling pain, loneliness or madness, or pleasure. As a curse I cannot die, cannot love, cannot vanish. Then she returned to her throne of ice, looking at the rest of the gods and goddess, then glaring with her scary devil eyes to Yahweh. Yahweh understood why she glared at him, he knew that god that came and destroyed her beloved brother. It was none other than Galamit who used his powers to corrupt the people, in order to weaken these gods. Yahweh could only look sadly on the grass observing the beetles as they fought on it. Seeing Yahweh distressed look, the young goodness with silver hair said, Whatever Galamith wants we are many, combined we can create a huge energy. Yet what kind of god is Galamith? What do you know about him Yahweh? In a war we must know the weakness and the strengths of our enemy. Yahweh, tell you so, she asked looking towards Yahweh who looked at her. He then stood up and looked at the gathering starting his ancient tale, a circumflex Lord Galamith was always a very bizarre god, just as myself he was born a human. He was mine teacher actually together with the present here Bal we were his apprentice, at that time I was just an orphan. Who was adopted by this strange man, it was back on earth millions of eons, years ago or even further in my past. Forgive me but it's hard to recall such distant memories, we lived in a country named Zion. A creation established under the great duchy of Bolongia. Zion was administrated under the five consulates, of which the present here Baal was the closest to my hearth. The desert country, established after centuries of a civil war, served as the Bolongians' military space base and secret research center. People of different races gathered under a global religion. Earth Anno Domini 666666 I can clearly remember the date cause of this unique number. The number that in our culture inspired many fears and curiosity. The first part of the year number 666 is the traditional symbol of Satan which was supposed to be the ultimate dark god arrival to the god of light we worshipped. Earth religion was based on dualism, which claimed that there are two gods the god creator. Master of life to which we all prayed, 
being his followers and the God Destroyer whom we described as the Satan. We humans couldn't accept the fact that the good loving God Creator and the evil vengeful God Destroyer were in fact the same God and that both good and evil existed to maintain a universal balance and allow us mortals to choose our path in that time I used to be mesmerized by the Chinese stars I saw from the desert outside the building me and Lord Galamath used to live in. Now what can the building it was? You should understand my lord and my teacher had a very peculiar way of choosing the place to live in. The building itself were ruins of an Ansia temple, a very small temple, probably an ancient Christian monastery in which he stored many books. Yes, I remember these ancient occultic books he gathered. Galamit was always busy with whatever he was doing, being constantly consumed in his research. Our meeting. How did I actually came across the mad lord? Now I remember it, it was the middle of a very cold night. Being hungry I walked the streets of the empty metropoly while other children slept in their warm beds. I was one of these children nobody cared about. Cold nights and hot days were common in this desert country. Poverty and hunger was a huge problem. Statistically 45% of population of Zion was impoverished and many children were in the same situation. It was a very cold night. Weak and hungry I made my way through the alleys my fate uncertain. The smell of the rotten core of these that died of hunger or disease before me was filling the air, the pain that caused me to vomit. Living beyond the human society, being thrown out, without family or even a place to stay. Ordinary people treated us like our bag, no one in the right mind would lean a hand to us. He was standing like a shadow in this darkness the air unusually dense and the blood smell filling the air. I wasn't aware whether this was a dream or reality. The dark Lord Galamis stood in the middle of a huge street, close to the center his eyes observing the corpses, taking notice of me, just as if he came looking for me. The man dressed in a dark cloth walked closer to me, nearing very quickly. Even then I could realize that this was no human a circumflex is this death. A circumflex I used to wonder as the figure stood in front of me a circumflex you will make a nice specimen boy. Come with me if you wish to serve a babe. He spoke to me and walked away, leaving me startled on the streets, hungry weak and without any hope. I was willing to follow even death itself. I followed the dark lord, who soon became my mentor. A circumflex Yahweh ended looking into the silver hair goddess eyes a circumflex what was Galamith like? For a time he was master of live and death in my eyes, said Yahweh answering the goddess question. A circumflex one of his notorious traits I could elaborate about would have to be his dedication to his work and collecting information. Even then his ambition was his main purpose in life. The Lord would always elaborate on the decaying state of affair and how rotten the souls of humans are. He detested it and dreamed to change it. He always told me that fulfillment of his desire would bring peace and happiness in the new world. He wished to restart the world according to his own visions. And naturally he wouldn't stand any opposition. No one was to defy his desire. The Lord is very intelligent and skilled in psychological manipulation, capable of understanding and even providing the needs of others. He has traces of empathy inside him but at the same time is convinced that his is the only way to save this world, secretive always saying what's on his mind enjoying long theatrical speeches, enjoying everything thoughts theatrical. Galamith is the first man that became a god. He gathered a huge amount of spiritual energy and in battle is capable of many twisted tactics, no single god could dream of defeating Hema, Yahweh replied and looked at the gathered, who stared at him with shock. It was the first time they heard Yahweh's story. Some gods were astonished to find out about Yahweh's childhood. The greatest among light gods was a beggar. This fact shocked many since now Yahweh was the leader of the most powerful universe spawning state, the eternal metropoly, the Magik of Lysation as well as the leader of the gods the Chittal he inherited after Galamit was defeated, the first time he tried to fulfill his mad ambition. The gods listened carefully, while white clouds were pushed on the blue skies. The almost clear water gently touched the yellow sands of the beach. The place was peaceful, very natural. The gods escaped the closed reality, they themselves crafted into something natural. 
an unknown world full of beauty and nature, subtle presence that allowed the gods to recharge themselves after that stressful battle. While Yahweh continued explaining, birds were singing their songs communicating with each other, variety of small and bigger birds that swimmed in the lakes or the ones that occupied the blue skies, there were also few that digged in the yellow sands. Birds were not the only animals, eardropping on the gods' conversation, further away few deers were eating grass or slowly, without a care nuzzled the berries of the bush. Life seemed to go with its own peace without a single care despite these troubled times. I and the waters numerous of gold, blue or silver fishes found shelter, thought some of them became a prey for some birds that knew how to take them out from the water, without drowning themselves. Despite these fishes keeping in tight groups, these groups were easily divided by the birds that captured single fishes, none of the other fishes in the group bothered to rescue the captured ones, to try and jump out from the water to scare the birds into dropping the captured ones into the water. The other fishes simply cowardly run away dividing the group, leaving the captured ones, to their doom. This is how all societies work. Like these fishes the group will always abandon the individuals to their doom. These are truths that aren't doped by nature itself, these that say that societies are constructed for benefit of all are liars. No one is protected by a group, the group striang is just a striang of cowards, these that can run away will run away leaving the weaker to be killed. This is nature. Just like in the case of these pshes being in a group dozen single quote make it easier for them to survive, it makes it easier for the predator to spot them and pick the most tasty dish for themselves. Societies and institutions are slaughterhouses, where you gather individuals making them play a farce and let the true predators choose whom they want to abuse and destroy. That is the role of the society to destroy the individuals, oppress and enslave, mock abuse, oppress and destroy, humiliate and to create pain to feed the always hungry horse of the system, and the structure they created, the structure that created them, the structure that binds them to slavery and destroys them as well, the structure that fears them, because they're loyal to it, and therefore punishes its best servants. The system does in single quote she trust even its subordinates. Cause the system being just a structure, detests all life. The system fears live cause it has the ability to create. While this structure main purpose is to destroy, until there's nothing to destroy and it itself will be destroyed. That's why anyone helping the system is immediately its enemy. Anyone trying to help others is a criminal. Under its laws there is no justice just the punishment which has to be severe and humiliating even for a very slight hint of defiance. Even laughing from the whores of the system is forbidden, cause laughter is pleasant and shows that others aren't afraid of it, thoughts why these that dare to laugh from the mighty must be killed. These are also the reasons Calamith wanted war, however little he was aware of it, system is like a virus recreates itself in all conditions. If the individuals themselves are strong, the system is just a mad dog employed to guard them from danger if they are weak, the beast starts consuming them. In my original world the second one was the case. Earth was slowly consumed by the system and would be destroyed. This place was Havuar peaceful and the sun shined warmly on the gods who discussed Yahweh's relationship with Calamath. Where is peace and silence there is also a promise to war, said the goddess with silver hair. Will you be able to fight against the one who gave you a chance to live? He even thought that may do evil things now, he was the one who laid his hand to you when nobody else did, are you strong enough to be against him? And looking back in our story we still in single quote she learn what made you a god, and what made you to leave Galimuth. The goddess with silver hair looked straightway to Yahweh and then to the other gods and saw that she spoke out everyone's mind. So, Yahweh, please continue. The gods observed the situation calmly as Yahweh took a few breaths. The old man who was turned into a god was simply too humble to trouble the gods with his own past. He felt like a nuisance at that moment but slowly gazed upon the gathered gods and continued his story a circumflex that is true Lord Galamath was the only one who extended his hand towards me. Despite the fact he was what most of you and others would say a monstrosity. 
It's a very good question actually, how hopeless mine existence was. I'm ashamed of this, but I do admire my lord's determination. His determination to change the world. Correcting all of this evil. But as many of you I cannot agree with the methods he uses, Lord Galamit wrongly assist things. Believing that only total destruction could free us from pain, no salvation as you know lies in creation not destruction. I hope he will understand that our role as gods is to create mixing elemental life forces and universal energies. That is our true purpose. This is what our God true master of creation wishes for. The one who opened my eyes to the truth and entered me into this path of what you call godliness. I never considered myself as a god. I'm just a human who's allowed to exist for eternity, just a keeper of the eternal fire. Calling myself a god would be an arrogance my dear brothers and sisters. While we're called that by our fellow human and other mortal breathing we're not gods, just ones created to follow God's plan. Yes the one to direct me into the path was the Mad Lord. Because of him I could interact with the spiritual and see things, that changed my fate forever. My fate as I mentioned was of no concern to the other human. For them me and many childrens were just trash. A waste product of our war-torn reality. My lord's madness was a creation of war as well. He was shaped by the events called as the politicians of Poland and the country's occupation, by the three empires. The three dark eagles. My lord was a person adopted into this reality, from a proud race of people known as the Mongolian Tatars, who used to wage wars against Poland and later become the servants and adopted citizens of the very nation they fought against. Due to the fact that Tsar Empire fallen with time. With time the adopted people too were given privileges and became Poles. As publicly only citizens of Poland could hold authority in the country. Tatars were recognized as being Polish and thanks to that were allowed to practice their Muslim religion in a country that was ruled by Roman Catholicism. Few generations later my lord was born into the country that already lost its independence and was employed in the service of the adopted homeland, in its strifes for freedom, helping to maintain integrity in Poland's time of need, fighting armed battles against oppression and living his normal life that was forever shattered by that tragedy. Yahweh finished silently looking at the young goddess with silver hair, smiling and cheerfully asked the goddess a question that was residing in his mind a circumflex forgive me my sudden question. But have you told us your name yet? I don't remember hearing it. I don't want to intrude upon your privacy, my lady. Cause I could pick in your thoughts and find out a Yahweh teasingly replied, avoiding the topic. But also being curious of the goddess identity. Belzebub smirked a circumflex oh Yahweh always changing the subject aren't we? Never getting to the important things. Forgive him my lady but as far as I knew him he was always a scatterhead. Belzebub intruded trying to explain Yahweh, also a bit mocking him and trying to remember himself what was it that made them gods in the first place. A circumflex it's almost unbelievable that someone like him rallies the entire Miggy civilization. Just proves what money and a lot of teamwork can do. Belzebub added and looked at Yahweh smirking evilly thinking how money was influential. Looking at Yahweh with suspicious eyes, the goddess with silver hair said, You may read my thoughts yet you won't find an answer. I have lost my brother and my name as well, from the time Mondigent had a name. If you want you may give me a name. She looked at the sky in breath, then move her eyes on Yahweh. Now, continue, we won't let you two finish when you only reached half of her story. Tell us what you hide, or we will look inside of our memories by ourselves. Yahweh. The goddess expressed, threading Yahweh a bit as he looked away and smiled a circumflex. You definitely know how to get what you want. You really don't intend to let me hide it anymore. But that doesn't single quote to mean I wanna tell you just now. No, the truth is I do know how to tell this story. When we discovered the full scale of our Lord's madness, 
we formed an informal alliance between light and dark gods, creating the 666 organization, naming it after the mythical number of the devil, and after that year in which I meet the Mad Lord. The purpose of our meeting is to reactivate this long-forgotten alliance. Some of the younger gods might never hear of this long-forgotten story, but in the distant past we fought this war already. Since most of you were born after these events, it's only natural that you don't know whom I really am. I am Yahweh Lord's Galamith disciple and one of his servants. Everything you see around you was both analyzed and created by Lord Galamith. Megigiblisation is a universe spawning, industrial metropoli-like cosmic base set in the material world, which original purpose was to gather massive spiritual energy that could be used in developing magical planes. Not most of these magical ingenii reused by the Mad Lord. And what's more shameful even these weapons that were used against you were developed by me. All existence needs two planes of existence, the spiritual and the material. Megigiblisation is an industrial achievement that combines these two uniting and enchancing everybody's abilities to its full potential in both planes. On the surface Megigiblisation acts as a huge universe filling metropoli that expands itself covering all known solar systems and entire galaxies, joining all worlds into a federation, ruled by the governmental body which I lead, it contains weasness, economy, cultural centers, religion centers, homing, shopping, everything necessary for the modern society to work, play and reside in, that's because megigiblisation is a universe spawning spiritual duel made to control entire societies and harvest spiritual energy from them, or to manipulate dimension and even distort it. We made it to mirror a futuristic almost utopian metropoli allowing us to mix both light and darkness by using humans and inducing them with contradistic qualities that would be fueled by the enormous shape of the metropoli. It's a knot to make them see entire galaxies from their windows. The fact it's a world always induced in darkness in the center of the cosmos and the clearly visible manifestation of human technology, which we made sure were seen and accepted by all, these combined contradictions allow us to gather energy by fueling humans with emotions ranging from passion to panic. In the world we created we made sure everything is possible to its full extent allowing us to gather the most energy from the single being. Now just think what could be done with this energy. We divide this energy equally using it to fuel these that might feel weak, ensuring the miracles happens in each life whether they're small or enormous things, with spiritual energy we harvest everything is possible. We can even return your world to the way it was before Galamith interfered with it. We use this energy to create an enchant's creation, adding it to the power God already has empowering him with it. However this same energy can be turned into a destructive distortion force. If not handled properly thoughts why we ensure that only God himself has full access to it and he is the one that divides the spoils equally among all. Galamath aims to take charge of this energy by denying God his rights and then he will use it to suspend all existence to destroy everything that was created. To return the world into the state of nothingness, uh, Yahweh answered looking into the silver-haired goddess eyes. A circumflex of course we made some defense locks to that power, however knowing our mad lord he will find a way to bypass them. God operates on our own WLL. Therefore he was given this authority. However because of this it may allow Galamis plan to come into fruit attention. So we need to move one step further. We need to change our Lord's ambition into something less dangerous, once it's done he will return to our ranks. Luckily if we have a bigger ambition to protect the world and unite ourselves in true manner the God will work on our will instead of his. This is our only hope so we must believe in ourselves. God has always been full of surprises. There is one in the battlefield who will stand and lead the way even thought he too was once a human. The world needs fools. But sometimes it's the fools who are the smartest one, remember Thada, Yahweh added looking into the sky, smiling because in his eyes it was the most divine sight. So you plan to change Galamith's way of thinking in order to end the war he started. Are we that weak against him? Being his disciple, don't you know any weakness of his? And I'm aware of the power of fools. 
Sib laughed and mockingly looked at Yahweh a circumflex Yahweh is the weakest among us, because of his foolish emotions. Uh, Sib ridiculed Yahweh but was hit in the head by Belzebub's walking stick as he angrily looked at his disciple a circumflex don't you dare insult my friend in front of me. If we can do that then this will prove our strength. It's the weak who consider this strategy a weakness. Think about it in order to control someone. You must have more power than he does. Besides this isn't a typical war. Haven single quote T you've been paying attention my lady. But Yahweh you of all people know how impossible this is. Don't be a fool, miracles don't happen by themselves, it's we who create them. We have nothing to offer to him, he's not interested in money, renounced knows his faith. Those in single quote he belong to any communities, oh but's no laws, forsaken the pleasures of the flesh, those in single quote he follow logic, there is nothing we gods can offer to restrain his main desire, nothing to use as a tool to divert his interests, the only option, we must reseal him, his only weakness lies within his obsession with his ambition, we must ensure that he won't see our movements, he is blind to our power and thoughts how we can defeat Hema, Belzebub expressed and looked at troubled Yahweh. Being teased by Belzebub's words, the young goddess dealt to him, Belzebub, I paid attention, yet it doesn't make a sense to me why Galamit is so strong. Why he want to destroy mortals? And what will he do after he destroy everything? In my eyes he's acting like a spoiled brat who didn't get what he wanted and now is angry. And this so named war, it doesn't seem a war to me. Dot, dot. The young goddess looked to her bracelet sadly and said, My beloved brother used to say less than nothing dies, everything's transforming greater than. Don't you think that this is Galamit's intention? To make this world his empire. As you already said, Yahweh, he craves for nothing and desire for nothing. Yahweh looked at her and answered a circumflex, yet there was a time he desired a woman. A circumflex, he stopped and looked back at her. A woman. Yes, a mortal desire. Then, Yahweh, why don't you try to describe her or at last why was she desired by Galamith? She asked. Yahweh stood up and gently walked to the ice goddess A circumflex they say she looked like a goddess. Her name was Amelia Platter, a captain of Polish armed forces, born 1806 Earth's time, death 1831 Earth time in the place called Justin Yanka. A Polish countess, intelligent with power, full charisma with a truly angelic voice. Galamit mentioned that it was her singing that he loved the most in her. At that time he was known as Dali one of Baron of Chatter ancestry employed as the captain in Inier in the Polish forces. The both shared a very patinate romance based on Galamis' own descriptions, I can't say how much of it was truth and how much he idealized it himself. He was introduced to her by her brother, she was drawn to him because of his eccentric behavior, which made the young Delwyn unique among the rest of the Polish nobility, and these were the times where eccentricity and romanticism were valued. At least she obviously valued these traits as she felt that Dalwyn was the only one that could understand her passion for the nation. She could also be described as the voice of reason in Galamit life. Amelia hold passion for history and Polish culture, which accompanied with Galamit's love of everything theatrical and operical. Would give an interesting mixture. Amelia loved Lamis' boldness in preaching his megalomaniacal ideas, while Galamith enjoyed her singing and obviously reacted strongly on the positive feelings of belonging somewhere that she gave him, and the ability to control his narcissistic behaviors. Which I must admit might as well be a clever invented ruse, as the Mad Lord never shown to be obsessed with power to the point of losing himself, or this might as well be caused by the ambition he has to accomplish. His megalomania seems to manifest itself in his eccentric behavior towards people, but not to the point of being offensive. Perhaps she understood the reasons of such behavior as resulting from the fact that Galamit was born as the member of one proud nation which glory was diminished over the centuries. Hence he felt that he needs to prove to the Poles the pride and glory of the Chatters as reliable and influential allies in the Polish cause. Whatever the reason Amelia was an exceptional Polish woman, 
that could accept Galarmuth as he was and perhaps they both were destined to live happily ever after if not for her death in 1831. A death that he witnessed, after caring for her well-being a death he felt he should prevent, but was unable to, Yahweh explained looking at the goddess. The goddess showed to Yahweh her cold eyes, and said, Whereas love there is always something to lose. Galamath knew that, so losing her it may his fault as I understand from her words. You still haven't give me an answer. Was he troubled by her death? I don't ask because that would help us allure him. I ask because I want to know if he had humanity in himself. She looked at Bezebub and said, I have no reason to help you to lure him or to help in battle. My powers are halved when I stay here or on the earth. You need humans to believe in you. I don't. I am staying here because I find you all enjoyable to watch. Whatever Galamath wants, I don't care. Piece by piece the throne of ice of the young goddess was melting. Cold and calm the goddess said. Continue your story Yahweh. at last finish what you started. Belzebub smirked and looked at her walking pushing Yahweh out of his way a circumflex before my friend can do that. I wish you clarified your intentions. Matrimona del system, your phony apparons dos and single quote fullus. You also his accomplice at Belzebub clarified observing the young goddess, who continued to look at them coldly. I, his accomplice. I think you made a bad joke, Belzebub, said angry the silver-haired goddess. Her cold eyes became evil and the atmosphere around her changed. She looked at the other gods and said, You said right, only one thing, I am Matrimona del System. I did not thought that I'll fool you or the other gods, yet I see that they are more than surprised hearing her words, Belzebub. Those foolish gods don't know anything. Useless gods, they will be destroyed first by my anger. I single quote I'll get rid of you all, or maybe I should let y'all weigh alive, to see how the end of world feels. The eternal virgin sat on the grass observing the scene a bit annoyed, at the young silver-haired goddess, correcting her hair, and glancing on the Medusa head embedded in her shield. Smiling Athena rose up from the place she sat on, elegantly walking towards, Yahweh and the two other gods standing behind Yahweh, hugging the old man from behind. A circumflex what a foolish desire, she remarked looking at the gathered gods, smiling as she let Yahweh go standing in front of the goddess with her tomboyish and always self-confident attitude, looking straightly into Matrimona's eyes. A circumflex we the Asians gods are shaped by this reality, we won't be able to destroy it. A circumflex, Athena answered the question that was in everybody heads. Seeing Athena's confidence, Matrimona felt annoyed and said with a grave tone, Don't you think before you talk? You will always need of mortals to believe in you, once they will vanish, you will slowly lose your powers and vanish. She looked then at Yahweh with her cold eyes and said, Mortals will always be mortals, and will have carnal desire, even you Yahweh, you toyed by a woman, how foolish. Even the madness is more powerful than love. I pity you, you don't know how true love feels yet you act like you have the greatest knowledge. You single quote are inferior to Galimuth. Yahweh looked sadly into the skies, knowing that what the evil goddess said was true, he never knew passion or joy, instead being just a bookworm. She didn't know anything about bounds, yet many times was forced to advise others on the meaning of love. He analyzed and studied many treaties on love, yet never felt any desire. He wasn't even desired by any woman back in the times of his youth and now appeared like an old man who was seen by others as a more parental, or patriarchal figure than an object of a desire. Athena walked back to Yahweh and hugged him once more, for this reason exactly, she admired this man. A circumflex that is true. Lord Galarmuth is superior to me in this sense, he felt love. But I always had questions about this, is feeling love good to us, are we gods even entitled to operate under these influence, feelings often corrupt our judgment. How many wars were fought because of these desires? I always try to follow the path of knowledge rather than a path of love, for from knowledge comes well-being, while love can also bring disaster if not controlled. Passion is the enemy of wisdom, said Yahweh ending his speech, 
hoping that this clarified some things a circumflex being the arbiter between gods I have no right to choose favorites or to fall in love. I have to make the right choices for both of us and humanity even if they're not popular, that is the position I was given in this world, uh, Yahweh explained. Dot disturbed by Yahweh, Metramona looked at him with pitiful eyes. Mortal people have a phrase less than less than as long as we live we're learning greater than greater than. You, Yahweh, are unsuited to be the arbiter. She looked at the crescendo from her necklace and said with a sad tone, As a leader you have to feel both joy and disaster, both love and hate, and you must learn from mistakes. There is no God without defects, in other words there is no perfect God. Yahweh, you were chosen to be the ruler of both those world yet you don't know anything. Admits you single quote are afraid that you'll do a mistake. Matrimona looked at Athena, changing her calm eyes with disdainful eyes. Athena you're weak. Those who are weak always stand by those who seem to them as being strong. Soon you'll see where your strong and fake slave Yahweh will lead you and the others. Remember, everything that was once born will once die too. That's the rule of all the world. Athena smiled and looked at Matrimona with her confidence a circumflex. We didn't choose Yahweh to be our leader because he was strong. It's because Yahweh is the weakest among us that he fulfills the role perfectly. Don't expect to understand this. Uh, Athena admitted and continued to tease her elegantly. A circumflex but you underestimate everybody. Uh, she replied looking at Matrimona a circumflex even Galamatha, she added. I do what others have done to me, I don't expect you Athena to understand either, replied Matrimona, making Athena look at her with pity a circumflex my now. This is exactly why I believe Yahweh is best suited to be our leader, we gods cannot act on such trivial impulses like emotions a circumflex she replied confidently mocking Matrimona. Oh really? Earlier some gods complained that they're feeling lonely. Do you think that intelligence can surpass the most primordial feelings? Don't act like you'd know everything. Listen before you talk, learn before you act, otherwise, you'll turn into dust. I wonder why would I even care? You're all a bunch of idiots. Raised in perfection's illusions, you will never be able to reach the true perfection. Never. Angry Matrimona looked at Yahweh with pitiful eyes, tried to say something but stopped before any word come out. She didn't want to continue a useless chat with a useless issue. Her true reasons who made her go all the way till the Eden's corner of God's were and with mercy for the others, she wanted to destroy every piece of the world and die after, in the hope that she will come on more time, by her brother, Arthemis. Athena smiled and looked with superiority, oblivious to the fact that Matrimona could have been right. A circumflex thoughts why I said it's good that Yahweh is our leader, she explained. Athena disliked gods who were corrupted by their emotions. She took it very personally and tried to prove that wisdom is more important than love. A circumflex gods who become corrupted by these emotions don't deserve to be one of us, or not mortals to be confined in such chains. Think of it for a while. We decide about many great things asked by our Creator to gather spiritual energy. We mustn't single quote allow ourselves to be influenced by these little and pathetic states of mind. Do you at least try to understand how much unnecessary commotion your actions have caused Metromona? A circumflex Athen. Gold break your body into pieces, then you would know. That it's dangerous to mock me and my desire Isa, Galamith replied looking coldly at Yasumi. Walking over to Matramona a circumflex she will die even if I won't touch Hira, Galamith ended, making Yahweh look at him a circumflex just like you mad lord, you're both dying from the same sickness. A circumflex, Yahweh replied and asked the question looking at him, as Galamith looked back at him coldly a circumflex yes thoughts true. We're both dying, huh? Galamith replied looking at the darkness he created a circumflex it's an eternal death. My immortal body is decaying. Galamith expressed as he coughed up some blood making it fall to the ground a circumflex this is my decay. A circumflex, Galamith shouted. I know, Yasumi. Uru was stare at Galamith. Look at Galamith's darkness. Oh, I won't eat that darkness. 
Gallimus murked a circumflex foolish girl, this isn't a food, this a poison. A terrible sickness, uh, Gallimuth replied a circumflex you asked why I could do such thing. You are listening to an audio file provided by the Free Internet Culture Organization. Steniza Augers, Zainaga, Ayano Chundi, Don Van Pam Pasami Single Quote Z, Princess Yuki Nyan, Titan Kronos 9, Dorothea Kirilova, Eunice Riachi Kalwa, Mogani Shin Kim Kyu Jongoska, Bogdanescu Anki Maria, Sina Kaminiwa, Sajuke Uchicha. Dedicated in memory of my grandmother, Irene who died in 2002, may God bless her and give her a peaceful rest. Blaze Master Eternal War Written between 2011 to 2012 With the help of my friends Matthew 16 28 A circumflex I can guarantee this truth Some people who are standing here will not die until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. A circumflex A circumflex A circumflex One distant star that shines with the power of God Celebrating the life in the universe Home to warmth. One distant star that shines so far away in space, engulfed in the cold darkness spreading its warmth to planets. Every plant and every animal carries Ida's light in its own core. Oh the distant star I send you a prayer from the coldest depth of universe is a beloved creation of God made to resemble him. Please continue to give us the warm we need. A circumflex. A circumflex, a circumflex, I dedicate this work of fiction to our beloved creator, master of all that is seen and unseen, the one that is watching over us from the past and continues even today. The creator of our free will. The true master, God. May the light of knowledge and love be fall on us living. May we be blessed in participating in your holy work and may my small and insignificant attempt at describing your glory. May the small fiction world be blessed from the heavens and continue under your divine inspiration. I want to dedicate this work to the Father and Son and to the Holy Spirit. I ask you for help and guidance. I also ask you to acknowledge the works of our minds and heart in your favor. A circumflex A circumflex A circumflex in the times of ancient evil 106 chosen people will save the world. The young goddess looked to her bracelet sadly and said, My beloved brother used to say less than nothing dies, everything's transforming greater than, don't you think that? This is Gallimuth's intention. To make this world his empire. As you already said, Yahweh, he craves for nothing and desire for nothing. Yahweh looked at her and answered a circumflex, yet there was a time he desired a woman. A circumflex, he stopped and looked back at her. A woman. Yes, a mortal desire. Then, Yahweh, why don't you try to describe her or at last why was she desired by Galamith? She asked. Yahweh stood up and gently walked to the ice goddess a circumflex they say she looked like a goddess. Her name was Amelia Platter a captain of Polish armed forces, born 1806 Earth's time, death 1831 Earth time in the place called Justin Yonka. A Polish countess, intelligent with power, full charisma with a truly angelic voice. Galamit mentioned that it was her singing that he loved the most in her. At that time he was known as Dali when a baron of Tatar ancestry employed as the captain in Enier in the Polish forces. The both shared a very patinate romance based on Galamit's own descriptions. I can't say how much of it was truth and how much he idealized it himself. He was introduced to her by her brother. She was drawn to him because of his eccentric behavior, which made the young Delwyn unique among the rest of the Polish nobility, and these were the times where eccentricity and romanticism were valued. At least she obviously valued these traits as she felt that Dalwyn was the only one that could understand her passion for the nation. She could also be described as the voice of reason in Galamit life. Amelia hold passion for history and Polish culture, which accompanied with Galamit's love of everything theatrical and operical. Would give an interesting mixture. Amelia loved Lamis boldness in preaching his megalomaniacal ideas, while Galamith enjoyed her singing and obviously reacted strongly on the positive feelings of belonging somewhere that she gave him, and the ability to control his narcissistic behaviors.
which I must admit might as well be a clever invented ruse, as the Mad Lord never shown to be obsessed with power to the point of losing himself, or this might as well be caused by the ambition he has to accomplish. His megalomania seems to manifest itself in his eccentric behavior towards people, but not to the point of being offensive. Perhaps she understood the reasons of such behavior as resulting from the fact that Gallimet was born as the member of one proud nation which glory was diminished over the centuries. Hence he felt that he needs to prove to the Poles the pride and glory of the Tatars as reliable and influential allies in the Polish cause. Whatever the reason Amelia was an exceptional Polish woman, that could accept Gallimet as he was and perhaps they both were destined to live happily ever after if not for her death in 1831. A death that he witnessed, after caring for her well-being a death he felt he should prevent, but was unable to, Yahweh explained looking at the goddess. The goddess showed to Yahweh her cold eyes, and said, Whereas love there is always something to lose. Galamath knew that, so losing her it may his fault as I understand from her words. You still haven't given me an answer, was he troubled by her death? I don't ask because that would help us allure him, I ask because I want to know if he had humanity in himself. She looked at Bezabub and said, I have no reason to help you to lure him or to help in battle, my powers are halved when I stay here or on the earth. You need humans to believe in you, I don't, I am staying here because I find you all enjoyable to watch. Whatever Galamath wants, I don't care. Piece by piece the throne of ice of the young goddess was melting. Cold and calm the goddess said, Continue your story Yahweh, at last finish what you started. Belzebub smirked and looked at her walking pushing Yahweh out of his way a circumflex before my friend can do that. I wish you clarified your intentions. Matrimona del system, your phony apparents dos and single quote tifulis. You also his accomplice at Belzebub clarified observing the young goddess, who continued to look at them coldly. I, his accomplice. I think you made a bad joke Belzebub, said angry the silver-haired goddess. Her cold eyes became evil and the atmosphere around her changed. She looked at the other gods and said, You said right, only one thing, I am Matrimona del System. I did not thought that I'll fool you or the other gods, yet I see that they are more than surprised hearing her words Belzebub. Those foolish gods don't know anything. Useless gods, they will be destroyed first by my anger. I single quote I'll get rid of you all, or maybe I should let y'all weigh alive, to see how the end of world feels. The Eternal Virgin sat on the grass observing the scene a bit annoyed at the young silver-haired goddess, correcting her hair, and glancing on the Medusa head embedded in her shield. Smiling Athena rose up from the place she sat on, elegantly walking towards Yahweh and the two other gods standing behind Yahweh, hugging the old man from behind. A circumflex what a foolish desire, she remarked looking at the gathered gods, Smiling as she let Yahweh go standing in front of the goddess with her tomboyish and always self-confident attitude, looking straightly into Matrimona's eyes. A circumflex we the Asians gods are shaped by this reality, we won't be able to destroy it. A circumflex, Athena answered the question that was in everybody heads. Seeing Athena's confidence, Matrimona felt annoyed and said with a grave tone, Don't you think before you talk? You will always need of mortals to believe in you, once they will vanish, you will slowly lose your powers and vanish. She looked then at Yahweh with her cold eyes and said, Mortals will always be mortals, and will have carnal desire, even you Yahweh, you toyed by a woman, how foolish. Even the madness is more powerful than love. I pity you, you don't know how true love feels yet you act like you have the greatest knowledge. You single quote are inferior to Galimuth. Yahweh looked sadly into the skies, knowing that what the evil goddess said was true, he never knew passion or joy, instead being just a bookworm. She didn't know anything about bounds, yet many times was forced to advise others on the meaning of love. He analyzed and studied many treaties on love, yet never felt any desire. He wasn't even desired by any woman back in the times of his youth and now appeared like an old man, who was seen by others as a more parental or patriarchal figure than an object of a desire. 
Athena walked back to Yahweh and hugged him once more, for this reason exactly, she admired this man. A circumflex that is true. Lord Galamath is superior to me in this sense, he felt love. But I always had questions about this, is feeling love good to us, are we gods even entitled to operate under these influence, feelings often corrupt our judgment, how many wars were fought because of these desires. I always try to follow the path of knowledge rather than a path of love, for from knowledge comes well-being, while love can also bring disaster if not controlled. Passion is the enemy of wisdom, said Yahweh ending his speech, hoping that this clarified some things a circumflex being the arbiter between gods I have no right to choose favorites or to fall in love. I have to make the right choices for both of us and humanity even if they're not popular. That is the position I was given in this world, uh, Yahweh explained. Dot disturbed by Yahweh, Matrimona looked at him with pitiful eyes. Mortal people have a phrase less than less than as long as we live we're learning greater than greater than. You, Yahweh, are unsuited to be the arbiter. She looked at the crescendo from her necklace and said with a sad tone, As a leader you have to feel both joy and disaster, both love and hate, and you must learn from mistakes. There is no God without defects, in other word there is no perfect God. Yahweh, you were chosen to be the ruler of both those world yet you don't know anything. Admits you single quote are afraid that you'll do a mistake. Matrimona looked at Athena, changing her calm eyes with disdainful eyes. Athena you're weak, those who are weak always stand by those who seem to them as being strong. Soon you'll see where your strong and fake slave Yahweh will lead you and the others. Remember, everything that was once born will once die too, that's the rule of all the world. Athena smiled and looked at Matrimona with her confidence a circumflex we didn't choose Yahweh to be our leader because he was strong, it's because Yahweh is the weakest among us that he fulfills the role perfectly. Don't expect to understand this uh, Athena admitted and continued to tease her elegantly. A circumflex but you underestimate everybody, she replied looking at Matrimona a circumflex even Galamatha, she added. I do what others have done to me, I don't expect you Athena to understand either, replied Matrimona. Making Athena look at her with pity a circumflex my now. This is exactly why I believe Yahweh is best suited to be our leader. We gods cannot act on such trivial impulses like emotions a circumflex she replied confidently mocking Matrimona. Oh really? Earlier some gods complained that they're feeling lonely. Do you think that intelligence can surpass the most primordial feelings? Don't act like you'd know everything. Listen before you talk, learn before you act, otherwise, you'll turn into dust. I wonder why would I even care? You're all a bunch of idiots. Raise in perfections illusions, you will never be able to reach the true perfection. Never. Angry Matrimona looked at Yahweh with pitiful eyes, tried to say something, but stopped before any word come out. She didn't want to continue a useless chat with a useless issue. Her true reasons who made her go all the way till the Eden's corner of gods were in with mercy for the others, she wanted to destroy every piece of the world and die after in the hope that she will come on more time, by her brother, Arthemis. Athena smiled and looked with superiority, oblivious to the fact that Matrimona could have been right. A circumflex thoughts why I said it's good that Yahweh is our leader, she explained. Athena disliked gods who were corrupted by their emotions. She took it very personally and tried to prove that wisdom is more important than love. A circumflex gods who become corrupted by these emotions don't deserve to be one of us, or not mortals to be confined in such chains. Think of it for a while. We decide about many great things, tasked by our Creator to gather spiritual energy. We mustn't single quote allow ourselves to be influenced by these little and pathetic states of mind. Do you at least try to understand how much unnecessary commotion your actions have caused Matrimona? A circumflex Athen. Gold break your body into pieces, then you would know. That it's dangerous to mock me and my desire Issa, Galamath replied looking coldly at Yasumi, walking over to Matrimona a circumflex she will die even if I won't touch Hira, Galamath ended, making Yahweh look at him a circumflex just like you mad lord. 
you're both dying from the same sickness. A circumflex, Yahweh replied and asked the question looking at him, as Galamit looked back at him coldly a circumflex yes thoughts true. We're both dying, huh? Galamith replied looking at the darkness he created a circumflex it's an eternal death. My immortal body is decaying. Galamith expressed as he coughed up some blood making it fall to the ground a circumflex this is my decay. A circumflex, Galamith shouted. I know, Yasumi. Uru was stare at Galamith. Look at Galamith's darkness. Oh, I won't eat that darkness. Galamith smirked a circumflex foolish girl this isn't a food this a poison. A terrible sickness, uh, Galamith replied a circumflex you asked why I could do such things, with this sickness an ordeal I can only desire death. Killing others is not my concern, for I alone cannot die, despite being close to death. Oh the pain and humiliation, uh, Galamith expressed. Then why are you accepting it? Yasumi finally found a bit of courage. Galamo looked at her question, unable to answer it realizing that the girls weren't afraid of him. Understanding that he lost this battle, he slowly faded away releasing his soul from the container as the body slowly faded away. The darkness cracked and I itself turned into the darkness, as the garden was restoring itself, with light penetrating the cracks and flowing inside the dimension, like a golden dust purifying the realm. A circumflexies Capreda, Yahweh replied. Really? But why? Yasumi asked surprise as the spheres in the circle disappeared a circumflex ah, uh, I really want to eat it. It can be my new spirit or who is still desire to eat Galamith darkness, smiling. While Yahweh looked at her a circumflex darkness is a force that destroys, such spirit would never let you control itself. It would desire only to destroy you. Galamith thought as you do, that he could take everyone's darkness inside him and control it. But instead the darkness took control of him, desiring his annihilation. Yasuma, I you defeated him by pointing this out. He accepted that cause he's afraid of, Yahweh replied. As the sun started shining, while the darkness gathered into dark gold slowly only to disappear, as the environment started to reborn. Because if I can eat half of his soul, he can change. And also his soul can kill me. Er, ooh, a smiling a circumflex you want to die. A circumflex, Yahweh asked surprised. A circumflex now why would you want that? A circumflex, he continued with his question. I want to die to end all of this. Because it, careless, heartless, ma, endless. No one care about me, said Ru. Er, ooh, a word really weird. Sis. I stare at Er, ooh. She know what er -u means. Yahweh stared at her, and answered a circumflex you wrong child. There's many people who care for you. You can start by Galamit himself. You little sister, the girl over there Yasumi, myself and of course Blaze. Actually I could go on indefinitely. Darknia, SS wouldn't kill you, it's just would be eternal pain, it's like that stabbing Galamit give you. Only the wound, wow and single quote he ever heal. You have it inside you already thoughts why you've sad for Hima, Yahweh replied looking sadly at er Ua. Er Ua keep silent, thinking what Yahweh tell to her. She ignored what happened with her, no. Galamis didn't care about me. He just using me. Er Ua replied screaming. A circumflex actually somewhere deep inside him. He did regret that. At least I could feel thart, it's okay if you don't believe it's fine. But please help me save him. He was the one that showed me everything. Uh, Yahweh kneeled down and started begging Uru. -uh. What can I do? Uru -uh touched her neck. Where is it at? The bond between her and Galimuth. Yahweh looked at her standing and observing the reborn world as the beautiful skies were colored by beautiful rainbow that appeared on the middle, tying up the two her eyes and diving the sky in half. The rainbow was constructed of five colors: orange, red blue, green, and in yellow, and like in a commercial that once aired on TV, candy started falling out of it, drops in different colors, falling gently as a rain. A circumflex first gather positive mana for yourself and others, giving just few to the dark lord you'll be able to stray angst in his light, Yahweh replied, looking at the colorful candies that were falling down from the skies.
Mana. Urua asks arise a circumflex yes spiritual medicine. It's an extraction of positive energy just few drops eated can drive the darkness away from anyone's hearth. Yahweh replied, hmm, how can I have it? Urua asked her question. Yahweh smiled a circumflex just gather the candy, gather everything you can. Uh, Yahweh expressed talking. Candy? Urua, surprised, why it must candy? Urua asked surprised a circumflex is there something wrong with it being candy, I thought most people like candy. He won't suspect that the positive energy would be disguised as ganja, Yahweh replied. Ah, uh, okay Urua answered and opened a portal that connected to her dimension. Take some candies and throw it to her dimension. She do it again and again. Yahweh looked at her and took some as well throwing them inside. The candies appeared scattered brought out, Gallimus space, fending away the darkness. Unnoticably for the Mad Lord. Yahweh smiled a circumflex thank you, with this we'll be able to create a diversion, make sure Blaze gets a huge bag of them. He will need them at, Yahweh replied a circumflex I sense his battle will be the most critical and one of the hardest, uh, Yahweh added. Hmm okay Uru uh, uh, replied observing. The candies which shine like mini lights inside the darkness. It can purify any kind of darkness. A circumflex Yasumi replied. She was curious about it as she had never heard of such a thing. Yahweh looked at her and smiled a circumflex yes it can. These candies are light. The positive energy in the universe. I simply crafted it out as candies. They taste good too just like a real candy which I hope will become popular in the darkness and not to purify it all, Yahweh replied. But, wouldn't they think of this as silly? Yasumi asked looking at Yahweh as Gabrielle walked towards her eraser complex but thoughts are intention, they won't suspect something as silly as candy to be a weapon. In this war creativity wins up, Gabrielle replied. She paused and thought of their answers. Well, if you did succeeded, wouldn't there be an imbalance in the equilibrium? Yasumi asked with Yahweh smiling a circumflex for something learned another is lost. Thoughts the universe is rulia? Yahweh answered her question. But if the balance is distorted, it could be destruction of the universe. Every force needs to have an opposite. She said meekly. She knows that the darkness isn't nice but they all need it too. Yahweh smiled and answered a circumflex thoughts why we're doing it. To restore this balancia, Yahweh replied. Why? Is the darkness too great already? Yasumi asked. Yahweh looked at her a circumflex yes Galamis actions tipped the scale towards darkness and destruction. We're trying to use this opportunity to restore the balancia, Yahweh replied. She was listening intently to Yahweh's explanation. I understand now. Yasumi answered, Belzebub smirked, watching and listening behind them, the old vicious man. Listened intently, taking notes on Yahweh's words, then made two step forwards a circumflex if we allow Galamith have his way, everything will be destroyed. Everything that was ever created. Keeping things in balance is not just the light's concern, if the darkness becomes stronger, the more violent we will become, eventually being reduced to monsters, full of hate and rage. Then everything weakened will be lost, we gods of the dark, serve the dark side. But we do not want to be slaves of destruction. We hate darkness as well as Belzebub expressed and looked at the girl's a circumflex at least we don't want Galamith to ruin things for us. We won't give away our freedom, Belzebub replied. A circumflex we used to be God's ones, gods of light but were betrayed by the humans and cast into shadow lay helpless, where we endured suffering, until humanity reminded themselves of us again, and restored us to our rightful place as guides and not just demons and monsters. There's no demon in entire existence that would desire returning to that prison. Thoughts why we will agree to that alliance y'all we ha, Belzebub replied. Sis, can I eat some candies? I look at the candies. Yo where can I eat the candies? It is okay. Er, ooh, asking. Making y'all we smile a circumflex sure she can. They meant to be eaten but just a few oka, y'all we smiled and looked at I warmly. 
Belzebub took some and eaten them as well a circumflex I remember when you first treated me with them at Belzebub expressed, handing them over to the other dark gods, Ziv included. Yahweh whispered to Uwazir's a circumflex everybody has a light side, but sometimes we need means to activate them. Thoughts the candies roll. They were like that pearl you used earlier to delete the information Gabrielle recorded. On top of that this allows me to monitor the other gods' actions by having a marker implanted on them. I can concentrate on engineering their souls, uh, Yahweh explained quietly to Urua. But even the gods have both sides. Yasumi muttered under her breath. A circumflex yes but it's easier to hate than to love this medicine was developed by Blaze Master. It helps the dark to purify into light. It's like a blessing for these these that were punished by God for not bowing down to humanity. We need to eat this and our sins are deleted. That boy is truly ingenious. Plus with this it's easier to come to terms with Ida. Belzebub continued joking to Yasumi. Y'all went on a circumflex but only if you wish to confront your fear. This is a device that makes your light stronger. But it's up to the individual to confront it. Still with this little thing, which is embodied with God's energy even for the hardest sinner, it's a trifly, Belzebub expressed in astonishment. Urua turned her head towards her sister smiling, you can eat it I but just few of them, I is smiling, okay. She jumps to the mountain of candies and eats some. Making y'all well laugh a circumflex Calameth really has an interesting interage dozen single quote he, he a circumflex he asked Ua, smiling. Forgive of my insolence but... Yasumi paused, thinking if she should ask another one. I wish to confront mine. Yasumi looked at Yahweh. With Yahweh looking at her a circumflex yes go on. A circumflex, Yahweh started. B but... Isn't this kind of cheating? Yasumi replied smiling, as Beelzebub and Gabrielle laughed at a circumflex were at war damn it. Of course we'll use all the cheap shots to win. A circumflex, Belzebub replied, laughing a circumflex, well you right if you think cheating is wrong. But it's too important game to simply lose it. And the ends the cuss justifies the means. And the candies are more like a spiritual cop they won't do the job for us, they'll only start the process of purification but more for most it's an order. Gabrielle answered Yasumi's question. Entourage. Urua asked surprised and a bit confused a circumflex and charge means court, you and I belong to Galamit's official court. According to the information we received from our intelligence. Thoughts why it's really important that you help you said, Gabrielle requested looking at the two young girls. Me. Help? I is surprising. She stops eat candies. Yahweh smiled and replied petting the young girl gently on the hair a circumflex yes we need your help little Onia, Yahweh smiled a circumflex a king asks you, will you accept a, Yahweh smiled and gently petted her hair dot Yasumi chook one but didn't eat it. I don't want to cheat, but if things get critical, well, I'm just going to bring it with me dot a circumflex bells above smirked a circumflex a wise choice yeah, he laughed it. Then I can be a part in war. I is smiling, no. You cannot. Uru is screaming. Yahweh sighted and looked at them with a worried expression. A circumflex unfortunately what you want is not an option at the moment. You're both involved already. You will fight either for us or Galimuth. But it's up to you choose on which side you area. Yahweh explained and walked away, taking few steps and sitting on the white stone. Gabrielle looked at them and stood up in front of us a circumflex listen here. The entire universe is at danger. We'll need all the hands we can get. Most of our forces will engage in battles with each other in order to collect spiritual energy. This is the normal part of the eternal war, the classic good and evil fight which will decide the fate of the universe, in places where darkness wins, total annihilation, known as the apocalypse. Where good triumphs we will restore the paradise. Humanity once lost. Many worlds and billion of lives will be sacrificed. To the darkness. Many souls corrupted and twisted for billionaires. This is the price we must pay. For Lord's Galamith maddening Ambiton, which corrupted and twisted the balance. Unless we correct this. And reorganize the energy structure. 
We will face another danger. The dominance of the system and the world going into eternal chaos. The God's creation losing its power and the world returning to nothingness. Uh, Gabrielle explained looking seriously into Uwa's eyes. What if someone doesn't fight? Yasumi asked, quite fearfully this time. What if someone just stayed in the middle? A circumflex we created the system as a pretext for humanity to organize, give ties to institutions as means to gather and distribute the wealth. And enforcing prosperity? But humanity soon became blinded by the powers we lent them, and rendered us obsolete. Dividing the divine and scheming to overthrow our rule on manking, cutting down the ties between the material and spiritual worlds in essence killing off their own spirits and any ambitions, becoming slaves to their own means of oppression, forgetting the purpose of the laws we imposed on them, forgetting about their own emotions and needs. In original draft the system was supposed to be an extension of family, a huge family that would expand the whole globe, or a universe would be called a global or universal community. This would be divided in smaller groups known as states, which would be ruled by their respected kings or queens with blessing from us. These rulers in essence were to form the heads of this family, being parents of these societies that would distribute resources among their own citizens, just like parents feed their own children, or distribute other necessities. As their right hands we formed the organizations, which were referred to as institutions, and specifically formed organizations that were referred to as houses of gods, churches or temples, that were to remind these rulers and institutions of their true purpose. Unfortunately we know now where this led. The expansion of the idea was too large to maintain effective control over it. Any dies this like greed or darkness started spreading quickly and rooting out the evil from the structure became impossible, thus the rich and wealthy. The rulers betray their own nations, concentrating only on their own greed and lust for power, forgetting about their citizens and about us committing hideous crimes in our names, justifying destruction in the name of love, creating wars, shitting and even corrupting that which was holy, like the morning star Lucifer, who was my brother, forbidding true love and any FOMS of pleasure or spirea of education, mocking it and describing his occultism, eventually terrifying the populace by making us monsters that are bent on destroying the human race creating a culture of ignorance and hate even to our kind. Killing the seeds of true enlightenment and even corrupting the universal metropoly we engineered ourselves. The system and its horse betrayed everything that was noble and good in the world, doing more harm than evil or darkness itself would be capable, creating empty shells of billions wasted and humiliated by creating laws that took away human free will something that was granted by our true creator God eventually condemning us all into spiritual exile creating prisons from their own hate and ignorance. A terrible punishment for the sins we did not commit. A terrible punishment for morally serving the human will. Exalting the material plane above the spiritual one, corrupting the visions and desires of immortality, killing off the legends and rays of hope and billions of hearth. The system that was to expand spiritual and physical development was made into a tool that oppressed it, bounding humans in us to chains that were unbreakable, creating more evil and darkness than it was even necessary, making some of us fight the humans just to survive in their imagination, instia, and of allowing us to guide them or help them with our experience. If we don't use this opportunity to break the hold of the system and its system whores, then it's not just the dark gods who will end up becoming monsters. The light might vanish for a good a circumflex Yahweh explained looking at her Uwa's face. A circumflex the light that is neither white or dark, but is a hope to billions by Morelli showing its different colors. If we get cut it off from the spiritual energy, crafted by the humans, we won't be able to maintain control over the dimensions, to give hope by revealing our presence, create miracles then the humanity will really become alone, as we will truly depart from the material realm, and to a secluded part of reality. And to nothingness dot death might become permanent. For these that will die will have no means to be reborn, 
joining our imprisonment. A circumflex, Yahweh yeah, ended his explanation of Uwa stare at Aya, Aya, I think this is the time. We will be separated again. Uwa uh, hug Aya warmly, thanks for everything Aya. It's your first war and the last one. Uwa uh, uh, smiled. Yasumi was intrigued by the goodbye. What do you mean? She asked a bit surprised. You will know if it's already the time. Uwa uh, uh, forcing to smiling. Yasumi really wanted to hug her or to hold her hand, but she can't do so, since she knows they aren't friends yet. But she can feel the pain behind the smile. Why you? Aren't going to die. Are you? I want but I cannot die because of this. Uwa uh, show her tattoo in her neck because of this. Uwa uh, uh, replied looking sadly and eating her sorrow in her smile. A life preserver. Yasumi gasped. Life preserver? Uwa uh, uh, asked. Yahweh looks at Uwa uh, uh, a circumflex it's an effect of his experiments right? A circumflex he asked quietly. Yeah. It's our bond Uwa uh, uh, forcing to smile. Yahweh looked at her and smiled a circumflex but there is no reason for you to break it. You two could still be together. It seems that this tattoo allows Thada, Yahweh replied. No. I'm tired. I don't want he controlled me, Uwa uh, uh, replied. Yahweh sighed and patted her head a circumflex I know but have patience. You'll be free soon in order, Yahweh replied. Uwa uh, uh, didn't single quote she enjoyed the fact her soul was trapped by Galamath. As long as that tattoo existed, he could summon her back any time, and Uwa uh, uh, hated this fact. Yasumi nodded. Yes. I've only read it before but this is the first time I've seen one. But. It's probably torture for you. Chills went down her spine. As she realized that Uwa lived because of Galamith's mana, not being able to depart and choose a fate of her own. Galamith took away her freedom as he needed that child as a pawn in his mad plan. Using a summoning technique and implanting a life preserver, making Uwa's existence rely on his power, naturally any resistance to that fate would be futile, but with this war, there was an opportunity to end this, freeing herself and her sister, and after she realized the truth about Galamis she didn't want to have anything to do it. She just wanted to run away to the fairs, part of the spiritual realm, away from Galamis. Together with her sister, she wished to find some happiness in this way. Yahweh was troubled, but he knew that Galamis went too far, imprisoning and tying up who was to himself. She had the right to reject the insane path Galamis took, but Galamis wouldn't ever accept it. As the Mad Lord was possessive of these that he deemed necessary, the darkness made him lust for more and more. Not because of his own wounded heart and hurted pride, he wouldn't allow anyone to ever reject his ambitions. This was his own curse and the deepest wound he inflicted on himself. Meanwhile, Yahweh walked over to Matrimona and started performing a spell on her, reading different symbols that appeared on her body. A circumflex or Uwa, can you help me with her? We need to get her out. Yahweh asked her. Uwa. He took his cane and hit it Matrimona's body, stricking the hearth. Actually connecting his cane with Matrimona's hearth making his cane shine in bright light, shooting out a white whirlpool-like -like energy that became a tornado formed of light. Spinning wildly the light was slowly sucking the world inside it as the skies became silver and cracked into tiny particles that appeared as dust. Creating a very powerful vortex that was sucking everything inside, making it fade away. The green grass disappeared as if it was removed, revealing nothings changing into multicolor fall mini threads that tied themselves to the white vortex, creating something of a micro ladder or net on which Yoe, Gabriel, Aya, Uwa and Yasumi could walk, not being engulfed by the chances that were taking place. In the vortex a chaotic micro dimension was formed, with white shining skies and rivers full of golden energies that were drawn into the center of this world as a dark sphere like egg risen above the golden fluids shining in red aurora with huge green serpents tying themselves around the spheres. Squeeching, trying to ward off the newcomers, that approached Matrimona's secluded world. Yahweh walked forward and looked at the serpents, 
which proceeded to attack him, squeeching as Yahweh's body sent a powerful white flash that made the serpents to go back, squeeching terribly and looking at the god with their creepy red eyes, full of hate and rage. Coldly tying themselves to the shell of the dimensional egg, doing everything to not let them pass, spitting up fire and trying to burn Yahweh as he created a defense circle in the air with his cane, defending himself with a blue energy shield, from the infernal fire a circumflex let us pass. Guardians of Hell. A circumflex, Yahweh shouted, but the hellish serpents ignored Yahweh's command, feeding on the darkness inside Matrimona's hearth. Jumping out at him and trying to bite him, as Yahweh knocked them out, one by one as they jumped, purifying them with his light, making them skeech as the true serpents disappeared, he then rushed forward, breaking the dark shells of the dimension malig, creating an explosion, as they all were surrounded by the darkness, that came out from Matramona's soul. The world created from Matramona's memories. Meanwhile Matramona was looked in her old memories. Even thought at first she wanted to get out from that lost world now she felt like she belonged there. She lost her will to go back to reality. The more she stood there the weaker she grew, yet she didn't cared. After what time she saw how her powers fade and even her existence started to disappear. Before she became disappear she used her last power to appear in Galamis' dream. She couldn't move or speak, yet in his dream she appeared crying while smiling. After she disappeared from the place she was looked in her body was consumed by few black serpents and disappeared in a black flame. Yahweh walked forward looking at the naked goddess that was hovering inside in sphere, in an embroical state, crying from an unknown sadness. A circumflex here she is. Locked in her own sadness, this woman has a strong desire to be Saveda, Yahweh replied and looked at the girls a circumflex but how to do that. A circumflex, Yahweh asked looking at the girls, hoping they would take his initiative, trying to give them a lesson. Dot observing the darkness created from Matramona's negative emotions, her own depression and desperation, that binded her soul. She herself floated naked and sane a pink sphere, the goddess was a prisoner of her own making. Nudity as a symbol of something bare, without any protection but also without any dignity, as the dignity was strapped away from this once bright Ethel goddess. In ancient times there was no reason to wear cloths or to hide our bodies in any ways. It was seen as something unnatural, but this ideal state was changed by Eve, who became the first matrimonial del system. The whore of the system isn't a single goddess, it's not a title that should be associated with just Yin. Rather the young goddess of the dark was deshived by the tool of human arrogance and greed, and was forced to represent it as a divine container. System however doesn't single quote here rely on a single container instead it makes everyone into a corrupt container which I describe as the A-circumflex matrimona del sistema. Of course it also uses a spiritual entity like all emotions to control its own actions. This entity can appear as a goddess, the golden duck from one of Polish legends, is in fact this entity. But it also uses other goddesses, to hide the real spiritual entity's identity. In spiritual world everything creates a form, an interface and symbol that describes it. In the language of true God's creation, hence the reaper is a symbol of human death which one could converse with. Using the Reaper as an interface to this force of nature, anger can thus be personified like an animal or angry human, so it is also used by this emotion as its spiritual interface. Because it's possible for one thing to use many containers, everything lives in bosses of free will, in the spiritual dimension thus, a force like rage can accept someone to be its own container and representant, this is a beneficial practice. Because the force uses the human container to work in the human world dots have thus made a pact with his own dark emotions. This is the true purpose of a spiritual contract. If you make a contract with God, to represent him, be his or its speaker, you become God yourself. The thing we know as God is in fact creation itself, the ancient non-human created force, that works throughout its own creation. This is the true identity of the thing we describe as God and in creation there is no rules, we may create good things and bad. This won't discriminate you in the eyes of the true God, because God is creation. 
This is the true structure of God, the ultimate secret of this world. Whether you believe in it or not is inconsequential. Because it's you who create God, if you're a follower of religion and believe that Jesus Christ is your ultimate savior, you are right. If you're a follower of Lilith and want to gain the paradise or hell, then you are right too. But one thing that you should learn is this, there is one God. The true God that has no name, everything else, Jesus, Lilith, any other deity is just its servant. So thoughts why? The ancient text warn you to not make other gods above this one God for it's the God that is creation above all gods. These gods are in fact interfaces connected to the one true God meant to represent it. Be mindful of that the structure of the true Almighty God the ones that rules throughout Trinity. The Trinity is perfection, a tool created by the Almighty God. A human that is a son of God the spirit that is inside us all and is the holy bound with God, the holy spirit and God itself. The true mastermind that remains invisible and can only be seen in its own creations. For the glory be his or hers he is both, he predates all divisions. This is our master our Lord God. The trinity is perfection as the man who bounds with spirits in the name of God is perfect. Because this man then becomes a vessel of creation that works under God's will. God rewards these that serve him with free will. One may obtain everything he desires. As the Lord will tend to the needs of these that are fiat hold out the system however that is just a tool, creates deceptions and lies. One that understands that we're forever bound to God, is therefore given wisdom. To see the deception, that horse of the system are just containers of lust and greed. The God will give you everything that the system can offer and more, for God will give you the power of creation, which will be bound only to your own will. Such richness cannot be reshipped from the structure as it's not able to provide something it itself does not possess. While God possesses all being creation itself. This powerful force of nature that can only manifest throughout life, joy and everything it made to grow and reach its full potential be it a single seed that evolves into the tree or a child that matures into a responsible human. The same force that creates destruction as it's necessary to bring something fresh. When something stagnates it must be destroyed to make room for a new concept. Sometimes it's necessary to remove two bricks just to add one larger that fills the space more perfectly and allows to add other bricks into the building that is our reality. Thoughts why there is no reason to be afraid, yet remember if you desire something ask God for permission, offer a prayer to God and you will be rewarded, if you are arrogant and try to take things forcefully, you will be punished. Summoning a spirit in reality, whether it's a deceased relative or mythological goddess like Lilith itself requires permission from God. Make an offering to the true God, and be sincere, and the spirits won't harm you. Because once you respect their Lord, and make an offering to God for the sake of a spirit, it's the same as representing them in a royal court in front of their king. You ask for them to be rewarded from God. God who is the ruler of all accepts this request, and it's given glory. Even a fallen one will feel pride to serve or help a man who stood up for them with sincerity to God, asking that it would be cleansed from its own darkness. In spiritual world there is no evil or good, just ignorance and wisdom. Sometimes a man can free an ignorant spirit, making it advance in the spiritual realm. This creates a huge bound and therefore the spirit then becomes a loyal friend. But in order for this perfect bound be created, one must first learn to play and oneself and foremost, it can take entire live. Thoughts why it's good to have all warnings and not contact the spiritual realm and God with ignorance and fear. Or the spirits will be angry only throughout a proper bound with God, one reshives a wisdom that can allow us to contact with our brethren on the other side. If however one throughout ignorant practices, gets a spiritual guide learn to love her or him, even if he's the one described as the Satan. The being willing to be a guide for ignorance should be respected, for this is the first stage of learning wisdom and the correct path one should take in life. Meeting a Satan is also a symbolical warning. Satan means respect God, you lack respect of the Lord, 
So he sent you the accuser to be your guide learn throughout him to love and understand God. For what you reshed from interacting with Echelion and God is exactly what you give. Therefore Satan or any spiritual being that shows up represents something thoughts hidden in ourselves, and since Satan is the symbol of rebellion, then a question we need to answer ourselves is why we do rebel from the bound we have with God. Satan that personifies all evil is Morelia character that makes us reconcile with all evil inside ourselves, so that we can join God's and storage. Once we learn this we can even consider Satan as something interesting, and it's all right to be interested or amazed with the figure identified with him, but we should remember that Satan is just a servant of God, he is not above him. Even if he would state otherwise, remember that Satan is a deshiver, and represents lies in the way we deshive ourselves. There is no reason to fear Satan as he's defeated, respecting him however those in single quote he mean were afraid. But it's offensive to be rude and arrogant, respect every single being as it was created by God. Satan is amazing, as he's a concept we created with the help of our master God to represent something, this symbolical language shows the wisdom and the true glory of God and we should praise God's wisdom above all. Be grateful for joy but be sad, be grateful for pain and suffering as it will increase your joy. Yahweh knew this secret and was observing or curious of what the girl would attempt to do. The dark fluids covered the invisible floor, making the environment change rapidly as thousand eyes opened themselves to become spectators. To a very unusual spectacle that was about to begun, Galamis had priestess Ua walked two steps forward smiling, while Shkwiches were heard, the souls were crying in agony. Corrupting this plane dot the dark mudded waters were fueled by blood and started to boil under the pressure dot making the silver smoke evaporate forming grayish clouds from which purple lights could be seen as the molecules of the cloud were slowly engulfed into a reddish spiritual energy creating an unknown and perhaps even unorthodox pattern of activating multiple micro seals that were embedded in the small molecules of the organic matter the blood was created from. A terrible stench fueled the air while the toxins were released from green bubbles. Creating a light green smoke, Yahweh took his cane and started to stir the blood, making the blood rush upwards as it created a defense structure collecting the poison noise gas. The poison was absorbed on a molecular level dot sucked inside by hungry and to matter molecules that digested the matter in the manner of few seconds. That was the power of this slim and fragile shield created by this strange blood-like fluid. The fluid started boiling even more as molecules were being connected to each other forming an aggressive erection. A powerful energy was filling the blood, making tiny serpents visible, swimming like little fishes connecting to each other's while themselves being built from the tiny dark molecules, they started forming something grotesque that started a gentle yet aggressive whirlpool inside the blood, as it attracted more matter into a crazy dance. Noises were being heard as the shadow birds aggressively fueled the area jumping into the blood trying to eat the serpents, only to disperse in terrible agony while from below a girl dressed in white with dark hair mystica appeared jumping down formed from the shadow birds that interconnecting, created a humanoid shape which then materialized itself as her, she gently jumped behind. Yahweh walking in front of him smirking as her eyes shine in red a circumflex you finally reveal you were true power to me. Lord of darkness a uh, mystica smirked while saying that, being a bit frustrated by the fact he was released. Looking back at her Ua now she again turned her gaze towards the forming vortex. Considering the rest of the spectators not worth of her attention. She continued to glare as the vortex took on a more humanoidal shape then diving that into one smaller and bigger, making them both grow and materializing themselves into two characters. The smaller one was Misa with golden hair and violet eyes, dressed in all black. This was the dark Misa, the corrupted and twisted part of Misa, which Galamith used for his experiments. The other was the Mad Lord himself, who was standing in front of the group smirking, as his red eyes shined in all the evil ways a circumflex you didn't think he'll let you escape without a fight. Did you all wear? I want to introduce you my latest subordinate, she's more deadly than the children you made friends with. 
This is the Dark Mesa. I hope she proves she'd be more fun, uh, Galamuth proclaimed laughing in a more menacing manner, enjoying the disquist in Uwa's and Mystica's eyes, as Mesa smirked covered in darkness, me Mesa. Uwa looked at the girl shocked, noticing the red aura that appeared, engulfing her body, understanding that the girl was controlled by Galamis' dark energy. Meanwhile Galamis smirked and started dividing himself in two, two more figures, the two Galamelds then walked behind the dark Misa, forming a triangle with her, where Misa formed the top. Stop it! Galamis! Stop! Do a, um, and single quote she do that. She it's not a doll, she is human. Don't control it her! Er, Ua screamed, terrified of what her master was doing to her friend. Making Galamis laughed as he enjoyed tormenting his priestess, he looked madly and started staring into Ua's eyes with incredible lust and obesion a circumflexo dear Ua. What a foolish little girl you are, you who never were human, dare to speak about humanity. Let me ask little girl. Yes we shall discuss this then. Let me ask you what is a human? A circumflex Galamuth asked his question trying to torment the girl's sense of dignity and looked madly into the whole situation, being corrupted by his own mind and twisted logic. The darkness took control of his own hearth, making him able to do even the most inhumane things, I, I don't know. But don't do that. Don't control my friends. Or Ua is going to cry. She didn't want her friends being controlled by Galimuth. She didn't want their future vanished because of him, and that made her despise the Mad Lord, and his insane ambition. Galamo's crazy plan involved toying with human destinies, with the destiny of all life forms. Erasing futures, and their dreams. Destroying everything because of his own hate and ignorance. Galamo hated his own existence and knew that it wouldn't ever end, therefore he desired even more strongly to end his own existence, and proving to God that he was more superior to him, because he could destroy what God created. Ending his own nightmare and disintegrating within his own madness, smiling he replied to Ua, who was crying because of him a circumflex you see Ua thoughts why you were just a servant, and a servant should obey a master in all things. Priestess you were granted another life, to fulfill my ambition, only when my plan is completed, you shall achieve your freedom, you are like these humans then my dear girl. For humans are just pawns for us gods who play our eternal game, it is we who decide their fate, we rule over them in the human's service, because it is we who granted their lives. Or who you dare to stand up to my desire? You wish to challenge my domain? Then very well prove your worth to me or stand aside and watch the masters decide your fate, for mere pawns shouldn't interfere with the will of their master sub. Galamith replied smirking avilly at Urua, thinking that his share superiority, broken Urua's will to fight. Underestimating his priestess, seeing her only as a toy. Galamith viewed her essential, needing the power and knowledge of the soul people. He used her experimenting to understand the hidden secrets he desired. But he underestimated the girl who was brave enough to stand up to him and to his darkness, but I know human can still continue their live with their hearts. Even thought they didn't have any ability or magic with them. But I'm sure they still have hope. They will. For their future, said Rua, looking bravely into Galamald's evil red eyes, making him look at her with equals as he merely wanted to break her will, using the dark truths he knew a circumflex this hope is a lie, illusion they create because of fear. This is truth about this so-called humanity. A circumflex, Galamith turned back at Matramona who was still trapped in that sphere, and pointing at her with his finger continued his lecture a circumflex you see what happens with T humans, who understand the truth they break. These humans are nothing more than disquisting rats. They fleet every ship that happens to sink. Humans are weak liars and dash ivers. They commit crimes to their own kind, waging wars, spreading ignorance and preaching hate. If humans were to decide between life and death they would choose death, just to delight in the agony of their comrades dying next to them. Humanity is a parasite and I will eradicate this problem. 
destroying these corrupted Shilsa, Galamith replied smirking from his wisdom looking at her Ua with disquist, finding that her heart wasn't afraid of his darkness, but delighting in it as well as finding out that her Ua is a very interesting toy to break. Galamith therefore licked his lips, delighting in the agony or Ua according to him would go through it, if she loses her faith in mankind. You lose your heart. No, the truth, you broke your own heart. Your dark side thrown your heart away. You see human with your eyes, but you didn't see them with your heart or Ua calmly replied looking with pity at her master. While Galamis started to get annoyed by the fact that she dared to stand up to him confidently, smiling to cover his own frustration and talking back a circumflex yes it must be your natural human ignorance that makes you defy my words. Thoughts right I should have known better why waste talking and communicating these important facts to a mere inferior being. My own foolishness amazes me. But it's okay even I the Dark Lord Galamith could enjoy some entertainment. You may try to entertain me then come on or ooh, fight me. I promise to not make you suffer too long. We got work to do after all. Galamith replied, mocking Ua's sense of bravely. Trying to hide his own anger as he understood it would make everyone aware that Ua was winning that argument. In his delusional mind however Galamith thought that he was the one that was winning. Why you want me to fight you? Ua asked, looking at him. Making Mystica walk to Ua's side smirking and playing with her dark hair a circumflex if it's a fight you want. I'll be happy to accommodate you. Once this is over you're going back to your cage. A circumflex, Mystica screamed looking angry at the Dark Lord who only smirked. Looking at Mystica he replied to her a circumflex oh right I forgot about the Guardian that failed her job. You think you can contain me? You alone wish to capture my soul. Little toy, you're nothing more than a tiny bug. I'm waiting for you all. Let's make it happen shall we? This was supposed to be an interesting game. I want to see my Dark Misa in action now. So let's not waste any more time. A circumflex, Galamith replied, shouting out the last words, making Mystica angry and prepare herself to attack. Gathering spiritual energy and looking straightly at his opponent. I won't fight. Well I won't get free too but... Urua continued looking at Aya, knowing that it would endanger her little sister. Galamis smirked and started teasing her a circumflex that bound is your greatest weakness uh, he proclaimed laughing, while Mystica jumped towards him rushing in demonic speed, being intercepted by one of the copy Galamis that changed into a huge serpent, and tied itself to Mystica throwing her to the ground, making Mystica use her hands to rip the serpent's body into the pieces, and quickly stand up jumping back moving hands straightly in front of her face, shooting a huge light beam at the serpent's body that quickly materialized into the copy Galamith, assuming its former place as Galamith murked a circumflex it's not easy to break through at my defense Barira, Galamith replied mockingly, while Mystica looked at him madly. Well I won't fight but I know someone who want to fight you, or who had my did opening a gate making me go through it as I entered the stage. A bit shocked only moments before, I was sitting at the fountain lost in my own thought. I didn't even close my eyes or go to sleep when suddenly, my consciousness was switched by God to this reality. This wasn't the usual way of how this was done. You might say it was an emergency and thoughts why God switched my consciousness to this plane. Observing the dark masses of errors and finally realizing that I was summoned to the battle by our Ua. I realized that the situation was very serious. Thoughts still continued to be confused. Mystica was visibly annoyed by my presence and preferred to ignore me. Okay anybody willing to tell me what's going on? A circumflex I asked a bit confused, hearing Galamith's laughter, observing the assembled group. Misa was standing in front of the group, covered in the dark aura she started laughing like a psycho, while I walked forward, looking at the two Galamiths behind the dark Misa, while she grinned a villi a circumflex he's controlling her again. A circumflex, I asked sighting, looking at y'all wet and noticing the rest a circumflex so you're here to old timer. A circumflex I asked Yoweh, making him notice me and reply back a circumflex hello blaze, it's nice to see you after all this time, faring well, eating healthy. 
not causing trouble. I'm sorry for making you do this, but we need everybody on our team. Stakes are high. You see, Blaze, if Galamith wins, our life will end. The world as we know might disappear. Y'all were replied and looked forward, making me reply a circumflex. Well, I did kind of realize the situation. It's not you, Rushwell predicament, is it? A circumflex, I answered and looked at Yoweh, while he smiled and replied a circumflex. Listen, Blaze, you are the creator. You have a power that is unique even among the most highest of us in this situation. You are a key that opens all the locked doors. Your nature and true purpose are hidden behind the doors that lock your past. Before you can win this fight, Blaze, you must venture to the place it all started. Blaze Master, during this war, you will go back to ancient times to witness your own creation. There, you find a knowledge that will make defeating Galamith possible. You must understand what it means to be a creator. Y'all were replied and looked at Galamith. I looked at him confused, being interested in the things he told me just now. A creator, but of what? What were the things I created? Were the thoughts that clouded my mind? What was the journey I was to take? I continued looking at Misa that was being controlled by Galamith, in the form of Dark Misa. Yasumi was just watching through all the ruckus, but she was also thinking and reflecting through all that. I myself was also trying to understand the words Yahweh told me, and the tactic Galamith was using in this battle. I knew there was a triangle battle shield creating, this was the dark trinity of power structure, where both met Ramona who was trapped in the sphere behind. Galamith and Mesa were used to generate spiritual energy that was then distributed to Galamith himself and throttled him to his evil clones. It was impossible to break without hurting Mesa or Matrimona, and Galamith's clones were used to defend Mesa from any harm. Suddenly Mesa attacks everyone mocking a nice wonderland. Then she disappeared in the coldness. As the cold snow started bursting through the whirlpool, everything started freezing making even me feel numb as both me and Yoe started combating ice with fire creating a whirlpool of warm energy that created a warm barrier, protecting the rest of the team. Misa remained invisible, confusing us as to her whereabouts. Hmm. Echelion is created by our minds, and that means we can also create and control. Hey Blaze. We can still turn the table. Yasumi said as she tried to fend of the cold. I was busy making circles in the air with my hands, guiding my spiritual fire into warming the air, ensuring that we wouldn't freeze for the rest of eternity. While Yahweh smiled looking at Yasumi and nodded with approval a circumflex indeed I think you understand what it means to be a creator Yasumi. You're right we need to create our own Wea Ponsa, Yahweh replied and looked at me. As I remembered the words Alpha told me before a circumflex I create with my own hands, what I create is warmness to combat the harsh winds of coldness, I create light to combat darkness. And I can create a path to go to I replied look back at everyone. I replied look back at everyone. A circumflex listen up, man is nothing without God, we need to create an opening for God. A circumflex I replied looking at Galamith who was evilly smirking, and enjoying his own superiority? I turned my gaze upon Yasumi who muttered something under her breath. Darknia, SS. Uh, isn't. Not all. Her voice was drowned by the sounds of battle. While I was thinking, on the way of materializing, what I said. How to open the path to God under these circumstation? And I realized that everything that happens has a symbolical meaning. That our actions create a code which consists of God's language. That our actions create a code which consists of God's language. I realized that in order to have God appear, I needed simply to summon Alpha and Omega the girl whom I made my God's interface by combing her's energy with my own. We would open the path for God a circumflex Yahweh. Lend me your strength I need to combine our energies into a form and summon a divine container I created to communicate with God. A circumflex I screamed it out to Yahweh. Yahweh looked at me and smiled a circumflex all right my friend you have my help eh? he replied as I jumped away behind, starting to concentrate on myself in locking my mind in an intense prayer as Yahweh turned around and extending his right arm he attacked me with his fire.
engulfing me in a reddish blaze that soon turned yellow. While I was standing with closed eyes concentrating on meditation and combining our fire energy, while reciting an ancient mantra I remembered from somewhere, little creaks of orange shining fluid was coming out from my feet, creating ancient hieroglyphs on the floor. The symbols that formed from this liquid were the visualizations of my prayers that started to manifest themselves in physical form as a huge whirlpool-like fire rose upwards, with me still standing in the center, while it made its way towards the skies, shooting and combining with the borders of the dark whirlpool dissolving it, as if sucking entire dark energy and growing in size, making the whirlpool slowly disintegrate, cracking like glass falling down to the ground, forming into the dark crystals that were engulfed in orange flamed. While I screamed, engulfing myself in golden light that flashed forward engulfing everyone, destroying the darkness dot making Galamith gasp in fright, as he desperately sacrificed his clones to create a shield of darkness. While the light fueled the area, making all of us stronger, even Mystica started to feel less weaker and more happier. While light energy formed into some strings and attached itself to every member of our team, combining with strength of our hearts. A huge surge of light lasted from the green now skies, and started to form into a humanoid shape, making itself smaller and taking on a more feminine figure. A beautiful woman was being formed out of light, on terrified Galamal's eyes as the woman started taking a more physical shape. She directed one of her hands at the dark shield destroying it, making it crack from the insides. While I who was no longer standing in the whirlpool, nor in any flames walked forward, to greet this handsome lady dressed, in a wonderful huge blue dress with enchanting blue hair and green eyes, she smiled towards me a circumflex you called on me, and so I am Blizzy, Alpha and Omega replied, smiling happily. While Galimuth, you are listening to an audio file provided by the Free Internet Culture Organization. Steniza Augears, Zainaga, Ayano Chundi, Dawn Van Pampasami Single Quote Z. Princess Yuki Nyan, Titan Kronos 9, Dorothea Kirilova, Eunice Riachi Kalwa, Maganiko Shin Kim Kyu Jongoska, Bogdanescu Anki Maria, Sina Kaminiwa, Sajuke Uchicha. Dedicated in memory of my grandmother, Irene who died in 2002, may God bless her and give her a peaceful rest. Blaze Master Eternal War Written between 2011 to 2012. With the help of my friends. Matthew 16:28, A circumflex I can guarantee this truth. Some people who are standing here will not die until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. A circumflex. A circumflex. A circumflex. One distant star that shines with the power of God. Celebrating the life in the universe. Home to warmth. One distant star that shines so far away in space, engulfed in the cold darkness spreading its warmth to planets, every plant and every animal carries Ida's light in its own core. Oh the distant star I send you a prayer from the coldest depth of universe as a beloved creation of God made to resemble him please continue to give us the warm we need. A circumflex a circumflex, a circumflex, I dedicate this work of fiction to our beloved creator master of all that is seen and unseen, the one that is watching over us from the past and continues even today. The creator of our free will. The true master, God. May the light of knowledge and love be fall on us living. May we be blessed in participating in your holy work and may my small and insignificant attempt at describing your glory. May the small fiction world be blessed from the heavens and continue under your divine inspiration. I want to dedicate this work to the Father and Son and to the Holy Spirit. I ask you for help and guidance. I also ask you to acknowledge the works of our minds and heart in your favor. A circumflex. A circumflex, a circumflex in the times of ancient evil 106 chosen people will save the world. While I screamed. Engulfing myself in golden light that flashed forward engulfing everyone, destroying the darkness dot making Galamuth gasp in fright, as he desperately sacrificed his clones to create a shield of darkness. While the light fueled the area, making all of us stronger, even Mystica started to feel less weaker and more happier. 
while light energy formed into some strings and attached itself to every member of our team, combining with striangs of our hearts. A huge surge of light lasted from the green now skies and started to form into a humanoid shape, making itself smaller and taking on a more feminine figure. A beautiful woman was being formed out of light, on terrified Gallimald's eyes as the woman started taking a more physical shape. She directed one of her hands at the dark shield destroying it, making it crack from the insides. While I who was no longer standing in the whirlpool, nor in any flames walked forward, to greet this handsome lady dressed, in a wonderful huge blue dress with enchanting blue hair and green eyes, she smiled towards me a circumflex you called on me, and so I am Blizzy, Alpha and Omega replied, smiling happily. While Galamith, confused observed her silky like, gently brown skin. A circumflex what on earth are you? A circumflex, he finally asked going back. Alpha and Omega looked at him gazing into the dark-haired man's eyes, smiling innocently a circumflex I am Blaze's personal manifestation of God, the beginning and end I am the Alpha and Omega. The celestial body of the Lord of, she replied and looked at Galamith without any fear. Beginning and the end. So that's who Alpha Omega is? Her voice was trembling with awe. I can't believe it. Yasumi, continued as Galamith looked in fear, smirking ugly. His eyes shined in red as he walked even more, while Alpha slowly walked forward being able to intimidate even Gallimuth. A circumflex well done blaze. To think such a fool would be able to create such intense connection with the Lord. I'm amazed, but that doesn't single quote she mean you won. No it means nothing in front of my divine wrath. A circumflex, Gallimuth screamed walking backwards trying to figure out a way out of this mess. A circumflex your plan will fail, destruction shall end. Alpha calmly replied intimidating Galamath even more, as he really started to be visibly terrified looking with hatred at her a circumflex go away from me you beast. A circumflex, he screamed jumping backwards with incredible speed, as Alpha silently stood in her place. Looking at the Dark Lord, with pity and some form of gentle sorrow a circumflex how can a child stray so far away, without seeing the light of the sun? A circumflex she asked calmly looking at Galamith, who continued to stare at her with disquist. Your Highness. I think I know the reason why. Yasumi answered. Alpha warmly stared at Yasumi, smiling a circumflex come closer child uh, she invited Yasumi smiling warmly. She stepped forward slowly, feeling a little nervous. It must have been the accumulated malice that was never released in his heart. Plus Matrimona's resentment and pain added up to it. Alpha smiled and looked at Galamith a circumflex yes pain and sorrow are created by tragedies. They cause darkness to grow in human hearts and thoughts when people and demons abandon me, the one that is both their mother and father the one that gives life to all things. The one that is inside in the darkness inside everyone's mind and hearth. Humans however need mind and hands for work, forgetting about the hearth, which was designated to be a mediator between the hands and the mind. In order to accomplish creation all three elements must be combined. Alone all of them are useless however, mind which is creative, joined with a loving hand and strong hands can make the impossible possibly. Alpha replied smiling gently towards everyone even to Galamith, and then continuing to look at the mad lord that was terrified of the loving power of God. A circumflex yes pain and sorrow are created by tragedies. They cause darkness to grow in human hearts and thoughts when people and demons abandon me, the one that is both their mother and father, the one that gives life to all things. The one that is inside in the darkness inside everyone's mind and hearth. Humans however need mind and hands for work, forgetting about the hearth, which was designated to be a mediator between the hands and the mind. In order to accomplish creation all three elements must be combined. Alone all of them are useless however, mind which is creative, joined with a loving hand and strong hands can make the impossible possibly. Alpha replied smiling gently towards everyone, even to Galamith and then continuing to look at the mad lord that was terrified of the loving power of God. Yasumi observed the whole situation from a safe distance, 
Galamith locked in his own fear. I feel sad for them, she said as she looked to Metramona and Galamith. This isn't right. A circumflex, when is it right? A circumflex, I asked looking at the unknown to me girl, sighting a bit and observing the whole situation. A circumflex, don't get your hopes up. This isn't over yet, uh, I reminded the girl and continued analyzing the ground, noticing energy patterns, flowing in the dark blood. A circumflex, you see this, uh, I pointed to the small purple lightings that appeared in blood, lighting up the dark liquid. Actually it's kind of the opposite of what I was thinking, dummy. Yasumi's voice was filled with annoyance. I'm worried for them. The girl replied, making me annoyed as I replied to shouldn't he be worried for us. Misa is close. I can feel her near me. Worry about that why don't yell, I said it sighting, while a creepy laughter belonging to Misa was here nearby. Geez. I'm worried for us too. But I just can't help it. She got incautious as she heard Misa's laugh. Galamith smirked Avili as suddenly as Sprint bailed me throughout my body ripping out my vital organs making my body fall into the blood and was consumed by the dark bloods that was fueled with dark fish that appeared similar to little piranhas that eated my flesh before being engulfed in red flames and dying in agony, disappearing and forming into golden light form that started growing from the dark blood pool. As I was slowly regaining my human appearance materializing into my human form, smirking, while standing in the former position a circumflex you'd better try harder psycho. A circumflex I screamed. Galamith only smirked jumping from Alpha who attacked him with a power force, running after him. Forcing him into combat and dueling him in a karate-like fist fight. Mystica observed the battle preparing herself, engulfed in blue smoke. Suddenly Dark Misa appeared, grinning heavily as the spell's insignia started shining around her feet. The blood started boiling and terrible screams were being heard as souls appeared summoned, squetching and covered in eternal darkness. They looked like dark shades with red eyes. They floated everywhere chaotically, squeeching with aggression. While bodies were forming out of the decaying blood, the bodies of zombies were created, forcing the dark souls to posse them, making them cry from inhumane agony. The grayish decaying bodies of men, women, children and many animals started moving to attack us, furious for being woken up from their eternal slumber. Misa was controlling the walking dead with a dark magic using them to kill us, as the zombies growled terribly and started running at us, from everywhere. I jumped back and took out my laser swords using it to cut off heads a few that dared to circle me around, forcing me to make a circle myself. T this is all so twisted. How are we supposed to survive? Yasumi sighted and pulled a sword from her dress. Can't believe I have to use this. She admitted looking at a rotting corpse of a dog with visible ribs bones covered slightly by rotting meat, was walking towards her growling terrible, then suddenly jumping the air and attacking her furiously. She quickly sheathed her sword, blocking the dog's fangs. The dog was spitting green acid into the sword trying to break it. The dog was spitting green acid into the sword trying to break it. Yasumi moved. She quickly jumps away and tried to slash dog down. Hitting it successfully the dog broke into tiny pieces as if it was made from porcelain. Mystica jumped into the air and stretched her hands Willie move on upwards, calling on her shadow birds that started flying towards her, cutting throat the ghoulish birds that were controlled by Dark Misa. The shadow birds sliced the dead animals into gruesome pile of flesh that then turned to the black blood which was falling like rain on us. Mystica concentrated making her eyes shine and green as her shadow birds were engulfed in blue fire, adding to their strength, as the shadow birds then start spreading the blue fire among the decaying zombie birds, that perished turning into the dark blood that slowly returned to to the ground. I was running throughout the living dead slicing the throat one on one destroying their hideous form, while avoiding being attacked myself, jumping away or jumping over them, while constantly moving. Yasumi stopped, thinking again. Hey everyone. Think. Think that these creatures aren't vile. Think that they're our allies. 
Mystica cited attacking the ghoulish birds and sending her summoners to rip up the corpses that were attacking below way circumflex it's not that simple. The Mad Lord blocked our thoughts, unless someone breaks the spell in that blood. We cannot influence anything. A circumflex, Mystica shouted out, while I rushed back towards Ua, tapping the shocked girl on the shoulder. A circumflex, hey what are you waiting for? It's you, you damn it. You're one of the soul people, use your power to purify these soul and send them to heaven. A circumflex, I shouted out, annoyed at the fact she was too shocked to even respond, I gently shaken her up, trying to wake her up from that trance. A circumflex, hey it's not the right moment to doze off, you maggot. A circumflex, I screamed at her furious. Purify the zombie. Urua responded waking up from the trance that was caused by her fear. A circumflex yes use the powers of the soul people, please him. I asked gently, patting the girl's hair. Trying to make feel secure while we were protected by Yahweh's fire that engulfed the zombies that tried to attack us. We stared at each other as Yahweh nooted and sighted meaning to tell me that we needed to hurry up with this whole procedure a circumflex come on, you got it to save everybody, especially I. A circumflex, I screamed showing to Ua how terrified her little sister was. Daughter Ua looked at Aya but they so many. She explained hesitantly. While Mystica jumped behind her looking a bit annoyed a circumflex weren't you supposed to be his pupil? Priestess or whatever, I command you to use your magic to make these pests go away. A circumflex, she shouted angrily at Ua and looked behind at Aya. A circumflex my my you better be quick about it. Or your sister just might get killed later. Mystica tried threading her, while I looked at the girl angry a bit. A circumflex don't you think you were going too far with that? A circumflex I asked her annoyed by this behavior. A circumflex shut up. I'm not joking with you. Garbugia, Mystica replied, looking around as the corpses were still being destroyed by her shadow birds and Yahweh's fire. Will you guys just stop fighting? Yasumi shouted. A home that isn't united, will be destroyed. Mystica looked at her, not understanding anything a circumflex it's not like you understand right Mystica, I teased her. A circumflex understood what? You all are foolish creatures anyway so Mystica replied and looked at Galamith a circumflex once I bind him my purpose in life will be restored, nothing else matters so she replied correcting her hair and looking at Ua. I am must die. That is the only way. Ua finally shouted making me gasp a circumflex what did you? A circumflex I replied a bit shocked and continued staring at the girl. No one has to die here. Yasumi shouted out are you giving up already? She shouted feeling desperate dot she wanted for things to be normal again dot a circumflex you can all die here. I don't carry a Mystica sided replying a circumflex don't lose you faith. This battle is drawing to an end. Galamith is retreating, we just need a little more effort to thoughts all guys, please don't let stress take hold of you and remain calm. Er Ua you have the potential to save your little sister. A circumflex, Yahweh shouted back while defending us from the zombies a circumflex we need to work as a team don't forget that. A circumflex, he added. If you all want me to purity the zombie then I must die. A circumflex or Ua shouted out angrily. In no way. Is that the price for everything? Yasumi terrified gasped. While I looked sadly at the little girl that was teasingly smiling. A Y A smiled grinning a bit it's not. I'm her weapon. I'm the half of her soul. I explained happily, no longer being afraid while I walked over to Ua and bitch slapped her in the face with my full force. A circumflex if we won't stop Galamith many people will die, many people will be forced to watch their brothers and sisters die in front of them. So stop being fucking selfish and do that already. A circumflex, I shouted angry, both angry at the fact her Ua was hesitating and that I had to die. But I also knew that she would be resurrected in a new form after the war, and that she would no longer have to fight with U.S. daughter Ua kicked back angrily. How dare you? Galamit never slapped me. How dare you slapped my face? She shouted at me, 
while I looked at her I say circumflex we don't have much time. Do I the? I answered and walked away, rushing to battle. Then break their head. It's more simple to purify them, er, Uwe advised me, while I stared back, sighting annoyingly and looked back at the hordes of these walking dead. Making me wonder, whom or what were they, that they ended up like that after dying. This is their true nature that revealed itself, upon our life. Animals that were tormented by the humans, just for the sake of a line ended up grotesque and terrifying monsters, the same with these humans that now walked into decaying flesh. All were these that didn't value life, or suffered cause of the greed of the system whores, eventually becoming whores themselves. These that growled angrily, were the same that destroyed others, killing, hurting and destroying. This was hell, thinking of death and killing in the name of lust while alive, made them desire the same in this world, for we are who we are. This thought made me tremble, even more when I realized these were the same that called me a monster or a pist while the same time they were toying with human or animal life. Who were these whores to judge me, when my acircumflex circumflex deed saved their victims? I was despised because I dared to save these, they wanted to destroy, destroying their work. I rushed at them running and cutting off their heads, destroying them without remorse, killing and slaughtering every single of these bastards, to my heart's content. This was my will to fight, no longer resisting myself. I just slaughtered these bastards, that made even me suffer, and they were screaming dying in agony and their eyes were decayed in insomnic and de evil fury, all the darkness that resided in myself was unleashed into destroying their body, flames appeared every my flames that burned their flesh as I screamed, regaining my sense after a while panting. Oh my, he really liked killing dead bodies so badly, er, Uwe admitted staring at me. While I was in my trance trying to fight the walking dead, Mystica stared at me wildly her eyes glowing a bit a circumflex my my I do know who's more dangerous. It seems the useless one is not so useless after all she spoke sarcastically, grinding her death. Wondering what was the power that gave me such incredible fury while I started slowly calming down and continued riping the zombies destroying one on one, but more of them were coming. Humans are intelligent but also ignorant creatures at the same time. They cause trouble but also improve themselves. I wonder. Is there still hope for humankind? Yasumi admitted as she sighed while at the same time she easily walked by the hordes of rotting corpses and quickly slashed them down. Making them die in a quick and painless death, while Yahweh who also observed my actions, Sighted and calmly briefed a circumflex well mistakes are a part of being human, in this way they learn and adopt. Being born as a human I consider it my honor that I could experience live from a human perspective. Havina, g human emotions and binded by matter, in an imperfect world. Created out of human free will, this second reality is God's greatest masterpiece, both because it's so true and yet deceitful. And because life created that way has its own precious value. In truth all sides of this war are right and wrong, Galamith is right and Blaze Master is right too, people who choose the system or the material world, valuing it over spiritual one are right too. The problem is when some of the sides tries to impose their own will on others, and instead of cooperating with others, they instead abuse. This is the true Evila, Yahweh replied, slashing the zombie bird with his walking stick. I too was once a human but it wasn't an easy life. But I guess it's worth living for. Yasumi replying looking at all of them. While at the same Misa appeared smirking attack them with tornado. After this she used the Armageddon magic that makes everything to be destroyed. Destabilizing the reality, enclosed in this dimension, forcing Yahweh to stab his walking in the blood, drawing light energy into the dimension cancelling the distortion. Misa wanted to create, while she herself ran away giggling. I have a question, Yasumi declared. It's for Yahweh. Yahweh looked at her, raising his brown say circumflex a question for me you say. A circumflex, asked Yahweh looking at her, while still being capable to divide his attention, to perform a well-coordinated defense from the zombie birds that attacked him, being shielded by mystic shadow birds, can gods like you actually die? 
Yasumi asked while still fighting with screeching, Black Rose. A circumflex yes we can dear, he answered smiling a bit, knowing the answer would shock the girl. He seriously enjoyed admitting it, because he hid mystery in this answer, wanting Yasumi to continue asking him the question. Yasumi stared at Yowe, confused, um, Master Yowe. Yasumi waited patiently for his answer. A circumflex we can die. But we're also immortal, our death doesn't single quote stop our existence it only transform us into a higher level of being when we die we become life itself that can transform our essence in any material forms we desire, this is what we are now. But what you see is still a form of body I use as that of a matter, it's more enchanted than a human but it also bears physical similarity to one. This is because I used to be a human. I lived and died as a human and then I realized that I could still feel and desire and that with my wishes my form could be reborn to what you see now. This is a body that I thought appears to be immortal and never ages can be destroyed and if it's destroyed then I die. Only to be reborn into a new form I create for myself. From my own spiritual energy as a being of higher plane. Once in a true form there is nothing that cannot be created. When Blaze died in battle consumed by the fishes in that blood, he at that moment ceased existing in the material plane that was formed in this enclosed reality, but his existence didn't cease and Al thought he was outside he could choose to return to this battle and thoughts when he was reborn. We exist in the forms of a phoenix. we are these birds that were praised in many ancient legends for our true form is that of an eternal fire my dear, Yahweh replied and stared back at Yasumi smiling. She simply smiled in response. The revelation was truly amazing even for her. Meanwhile Galamit was trying to defend himself from Alpha's bunches, shielding himself her fists and then shooted out a dark impulse that made Alpha kneel down from pain as he kicked her in face a circumflex what a foolish woman you are. A circumflex, he screamed kicking her down, making her look back smiling a circumflex you confuse things too much, you shouldn't look at the form but what's in Cedia, Alpha replied smiling as her eyes shine in light green, suddenly a surge energy exploded forming a circled shockwave that spread it touching Galamit as he screamed terribly being burned. Green flames covered his body forcing him to use dark energy, to shield himself making the flames fade away. He continued to look at Alpha with disquist, knowing now that she was a formidable enemy. Galamith feared Alpha due to the fact she was God incarnated and plus special abilities, but of course wouldn't admit that wilingly preferring to mask his fear with arrogance. Yasumi observed the whole situation from a distance, she noticed that Galamith was afraid. And felt pity for him. I pity the fool. She expressed while the Mad Lord tried to make himself look fearful. The twisted mind of the Dark Lord, the most bizarre enigmas of the demonical world, concluded new strategy. Galamit was a fool to assume the role of Satan, the arch-enemy of God, but by no means he was stupid. Galamit's awkward intelligence made him a formidable foe, while his bizarre nature made him funny at times. These were the qualities of a mad lord that should be respect thought a circumflex stand back you foolish god. For I shall bring you into oblivion. A circumflex, Galamith yet again proclaimed theatrically, his insane ambition. A circumflex stand back you foolish god. For I shall bring you into oblivion. A circumflex, Galamith yet again proclaimed theatrically, his insane ambition. What can make this insane lord? normal. He has everything already. Yasumi expressed. Yahweh walked over to her erecting a flame barrier around us as we observed the decaying heart being burned in orange flames. I used this opportunity to rest a bit while Yahweh replied a circumflex he has everything with exception of true love yeah. Yahweh replied, making me smirk a circumflex don't tell me it's all about a girl. Or does the mad lord prefer boys? Tragic case story now thoughts in new Onia, I replied, interrupting Yahweh and walking into the center of the flame circle. Ugh. And we have another jester. What fun. Yasumi said sarcastically. While I looked at her a circumflex you know it was the jester that was the smartest in Polish history. Ha in talking about Poland again. 
Huh, well, here's an interesting information, Yoa. Galamith referred something about Boland earlier when we meet in his laboratory. I answered Yasumi looking at the girl and then turning my gaze towards Yahweh. A circumflex Galamith is a Polish tatter. His true identity is Duke Dalwing. He was Amelia Platter's lover. The two would be engodded and living happily ever, if it wasn't for the politicians. And Amelia rejecting his proposal on the grounds of morality and national duty. Thought she was pretty much extroverted and might as well not treated him seriously. In Galamis' mind as well as in the Polish history she was idealized into a national heroa, Yahweh replied, making me join into the conversation a circumflex Amelia Platter. Oh I meted her few times the real one has the typical Polish personality thoughts not far from the system horrors one, or immoral ones. Thought she did deserve the title of national hero. She's not too pretty either rather talkative, but also very intelligent and caring. She's a devoted Catholic and Christian. Thoughts both, good and bad qualities. Well she's not easy to have sex, so thoughts rather should be expressed as she's not easy to talk about sex rather than having it. She lived according to the old principles. Where sex without the Catholic or systematic marriage, it's a form of registering relationships in the system and with the local authorities. Not precisely the rigoristic I like to follow you know. Anyways it's also was a social order and I believe Galamis being the weirdo which he is now. Wasn't very respected by the social aristocracy and environment. They would mostly treat him as a jockey. I replied and looked at Yahweh who sided at me and not at a you know you history well. Yes Galamith wasn't tolerated in the social gatherings and often would be excluded from the social meetings of the Troubles due to the fact he was in tatter orphan adopted by Polish nobility out of a whim. Galamith was treated by them as human sacrifice. They would praise him if he nobly died during a battle and Amelia's only purpose was to make Galamith fight in the most dangerous fights during the uprising. You might call it fool's luck that he survived while Amelia died. A circumflex, Yahweh replied looking at Galimuth. And how is that connected to this battle? Yasumi asked. Making Yahweh think a bit analyze the situation a circumflex Lord Galimuth promised to avenge her death and to break the seals of his cursed fate as he butted it in his own words. Since he didn't take Amelia's personality into an account, the other things he could blame would be the society and the spiritual realm. Thus he seeks to destroy both the material and spiritual. A circumflex, Yower explained a circumflex well the real Amelia was caring and probably considered him as a friend, but that at the end she was extroverted and pragmatic and Galamit wasn't husband material. I believe he could be shunned also from the fact his weirdness came from introversion, just like we all are considered weirdest by the mighty extroverts who think they decide our fate here, I replied observing how the fire engulfed the decaying birds. Were in Lady Matrimona and Galamith's siblings before? Yasumi asked. While I looked at them surprised and a bit shocked a circumflex Lady Matrimona. Matrimona is here. A circumflex, I asked surprised, hearing that one of the goddesses that patroned the system was in the same place as me. It was very hard to approach them. Yasumi looked to the black sphere behind Galamith and inside it is a human-shaped figure. Lady Matrimona and Galamith. Well, they had problems that resulted to this. I looked a bit enraged. A circumflex Lady Matrimona del system. One of the cursed goddesses we have all problems because of these, she's the whore of Babylon. Actually it's skin to fitting for the one that assumes the role of Satan to marry the whore of Babylon, the two is known as the worst enemies of both the spiritual and material, the system that denies our spirituality and our soul and Satan that hates all creation of Gotra. I explained and looked annoyed, citing a circumflex damn it I thought that Matrimona known also as the spouse of God. The second to Lilith. Okay well Yasumi, Urula and the rest have you hear the story of the first prototypes, back in a very very distant past in the times of basic creations. God developed a male prototype, a male personality which is implanted in all of males. This personality was known as Adam. To offset the male personality and to make it complete he created the first female prototype. Which was a failure. After the failure came another female prototype known as Metramonet or Eve. 
the original Eve was the sustainer of the male part and the original consort of male gods persona known as Adam, the failure which was true independent, and equal to the male counterpart, was named by the humans as Lilith. Her fate originally was to be abandoned. Not because Lilith was impure but was too perfect for the whole situation to evolve, both Adam and Lilith didn't want to back down representing equal characteristics. So, Ot God didn't destroy Lilith he made her into a guide and permitted her to exist. Meanwhile Eve, who was a more submissive personality had completed the design more perfectly, and the so-called extroverted society was formed. However unlike Lilith who was an introvert, extroverts uh, oriented themselves on the outside and could care less about their true feelings, while Lilith who was introverted, decided to create a male that would complement her, thus she gave birth to some male, who was an introverted male personality. Thus God started existing as four different personalities that started to interact with each other the culminating point being the seduction of the extroverted Eve by some male the introverted male, which uncovered the main fault the extroverts had, which was artificial bounds. While Eve acted according to Adam's will, she actually couldn't care less about him. Having someone more attractive than the Adam persona, the Eve betrayed Adam, consuming the forbidden fruit who was some male. Thus Lilith who felt outraged by Eve's actions, who dared to take something she created for herself, decided to pursue Adam. This in turn enraged Eve, who saw Lilith as a threat to her position as the wife of Adam the god's primal male personality, and decided to create a division between the extroverted reality, which we know as the material world, and the introverted reality we know as Echelian, resulting in what we were taught to be as Adam's and Eve's expulsion from heavens. While Lilith and Samael remained in their own world known as Echelian. This is how both the spiritual and material were created. This is also how this battle were taking part started. Now the Adam and Eve were the protoblasts of the mortal and material society, with all its politics, and the creation of system. Lilith and Samael were branded as demons and Samael become the first Satan. Eve and everybody based on her became the original Matrimonas del System or what we refer to as System Whores. Lilith and Samael became the basis for the spiritual world and what was later defined as introversion. All extroverts however hail from Adam and Eve. And therefore there's an eternal war between the two personalities, caused by the original four prototypes. Now the problem we face here is simple. Both Eve and Lilith were created to satisfy Adam, However the extroverted male that is Adam can only form a proper relationship with Eve, who is also an extroverted female, while Eve could be a caring friend to some male the introverted male, she will never form a proper relationship with him. While at the same time Lilith who can be Adam's companion will not form an extroverted relationship with him, because she's not submissive and perfect, however she will form a relationship with some male whom she created to adore and be her perfect counterpart, I explained looking at Yasumi. Sis why we didn't help them, said I while show her Uwe something in her hand. Er Uwe look at I a hand. There is a candy. She's surprised, ah, uh, that candy. You want to fight I Er Uwe looked at her smiling. So what will you do with that candy, I Ask her Uwe. She have bad feeling. Maybe I want to it to give the candy to Galamuth. You will do this sis, give it to Galamuth, I am smiling. But, how can I give it to him? There is no reason that make Galamuth want to eat it. I am smiling, ah, uh, then kiss him that's good idea isn't it? He <laughs> he, hearing that er Uwe face going red. No, I cannot do that. Er Uwe screaming. A circumflex that would work on me thought uh, I replied. Looking at the battle in front of us, and noticing that the entire area was almost cleaned from Mises zombies a circumflex we could try making some girl from our side have sex with him. But then again it's something thoughts my weakness not his. I explained smirking and blushing at the thought. Imaginating the pervy scenes that would take place, no. No kiss no sex. Give me another idea or who is still screaming. I looked around the scene. Seeing how Mystica slashed throughout the dead bodies, destroying most of them in the process, and then looked back at the girl's a circumflex forget about that. First we need to help Mystica, I answered.
Good. Then I won't do that embarrassed thing. Er, Ula opened a portal some of her spirits come out. Maybe it will help a bit. This made me smirk as gaze up into the situation. A circumflex yes it will, uh, I admitted, smirking, but I don't know what spirit that I must use. I smirked a circumflex a powerful onia, I explained. Powerful. Uh, maybe I must use my wolves. A circumflex, do you think they could make throw up to Galamith? Mises zombies are making things difficult to, I answered observing the hordes of the dead, being engulfed by Alpha's blue fire, and purified by light, while Galamith smirked observing the whole situation, then going by, past the shocked Alpha making her stand behind him as he moved his hand maniacally a circumflex you see God. How this irrational defiance can be complete ultimate destruction, the ultimate fire that will consume is what I desire come destruction come my desires, we shall create oblivion. Yes look at this spectacle oh ye arrogant fools. That stand in the way of the ultimate death. You are weak. You are so insignificant. A circumflex, Galamith exclaimed laughing madly moving his hands for Ruots and creating a huge black energy beam that was quickly shoot at us making all of us avoid being hitted as Galamith appeared in front of me trying to punch me in the face as I avoided while he attacked Mystica forcing her to use blood to shield herself from the tentacles he used trying to corrupting her soul a circumflex foolish fools you will never stop the inevitable this destruction will be the punishment to all of you for the arrogance a circumflex Galamith exclaimed madly a circumflex I told you this before you're the arrogant one a circumflex I yelled at him and looked at her I can use my wolves to stop their movement for a while then I'll try to help Misa Galamis smirked and teleported back to Alpha as she calmly observed his actions, turning around and jumping away a circumflex fine do that quicker, I replied observing the zombies, when suddenly an idea came into my mind a circumflex hey ooh what would happen if the wolves consumed these candies, could you fuse the power of light with your spirits uh, I asked looking at the girl, hoping it was possible, I don't know, I haven't tried it before, I'm not sure, the girl replied making me look at her a circumflex then go ahead and try it. Maybe I could try using a force field attack combining it with your wolf's cover up uh, I replied. The zombies were crowling drinking the dark blood okay. Er, uh, uh, open a gate and take up some candies. Well, hope my spirits will find, give some candies to the wolves. The candies were thrown by a uh, throw at the golden gate, creating a golden flash inside. While I started slowly gathering all of my spiritual energy, preparing for one of the most intense attacks in this battle. The wolves start howling and eat the candies. But suddenly a huge amount of energy attacker Ua. No one attacker Ua. Er Ua thrown far away. She tried to stand up and see what happened. She see her wolves are became light bowl of souls. It's my magic. The candies. Vanishing my magic. Er, Ua shocked. I looked back at the situation angered a circumflex what the hell is happening uh, I yelled while y'all were sighted and calmly looked at me a circumflex this the most pure of boastive energies, it cannot be combined with darkness uh, y'all were replied, while I yelled angered a circumflex you could have said so earlier. A circumflex I yelled and looked annoyed while calming in order to not waste my energy a circumflex damn it. Just fucking damn it. A circumflex, I vented out my frustration. Dot the ball of souls come near Ua. Er, Ua check everything. Blaze. I cannot remake them. Making me ever more pissed. A circumflex, great, this is just great. We're fighting a battle and we destroyed our weapons. Damn it, y'all, where how could you of all people make suck a blunder? A circumflex, I yelled at him, a circumflex, its function is purification, not combination. Blaze, I suggest you check things more throttle before risking your resources. Uh, Yahweh expressed and continued fighting the remaining zombies. Daughter Ua looked confused. She eats all ball of souls. Making me wonder. What the hell she was doing? A circumflex, what are you doing? A circumflex, I asked surprised, watching as her Ua consume the bright ball. Uh, 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 what are you doing? I don't think you're supposed to eat that. Yasumi exclaimed with worried. 
I looked at her serious a bit and sighed at a circumflex let her do it. We need to do something now. A circumflex I yelled and looked at the upper skies, noticing the strange patterns that appeared in the golden surface of the skies that made this dimensional ceilings. Well, but still, what will happen to her? Yasumi continued while her face shone sincere worry. Uwa continued biting and swallowing the ball while I helplessly observed the situation. In the truth, no one knew what would happen now. Uwa finished eating the souls. She felt comfortable. She can sense that amount of power come back to her body. But her tattoo active. Uwa look at Galimuth. Galimuth smile evilly to her. He know. That eat souls is taboo. Uwa replied. Meanwhile Galamit observed the situation slowly his red eyes shine, as he suddenly moved his hand making the Misa zombies disintegrate into the dark blood, they were created from this a circumflex I was waiting for this up, he quietly commented observing the situation. I continued looking shocked, while the zombies that were attacking us suddenly disappeared. A circumflex what's going on? A circumflex I asked. While Mystica walked beside me a circumflex he cancelled his attack, Mystica replied observing him closely. Yasumi rushed towards Uwa and started questioning her, what happens to the souls that get eaten? She quickly asked her question worried. Oh the soul fusion with my soul. And I have the ability now. Uwa smiled while preparing to summon a spell, don't worry Blaze I can use their ability making me shocked as I continued to observe the situation. Miss Uwa, what's going to happen then? Yasumi asked while preparing herself for something she felt could happen now. A circumflex it seems that Galamit anticipated this, thoughts why he cancelled Misa's undead army. Yahweh replied, while I smirked a circumflex I, I see he did that so we wouldn't take control over them. So thoughts what happened Etta? I replied while looking at Mystica who was grinning a circumflex but that means the bastard is unprotected. Uh, Mystica replied. Uh, uh, Uwa replied watching him. She knew what Galamith wanted from her daughter. Uwa looked at Aya. Aya, go. Don't let he find you. Open a portal then run away. Uh, Uwa tried to warn her little sister, but Galamith appeared in front of Aya smirking wildly a circumflex. Aya come to me. Together we shall finish my desire. Change into the form you were destined to Tiki, he commanded into Aya, making me run towards the little girl, trying to attack him but being rippled by a powerful force explosion a circumflex place go keep alpha company. A circumflex, he replied. Uru rushed to Galimuth. Her speed same as the speed of her wolf familiar. She is standing between Galimuth and Aya, don't touch her, she commanded to Galimuth. While he smirked a circumflex oh why what's wrong with me touching her? A circumflex he asked mockingly, and walked closer. Because she's not your doll, Uwa replied making Galamit laughed a circumflex and what is she if not a doll? Created for a very specific purpose my dear. A circumflex, Galamit asked smirking avilly. I won't tell you, Uwa pushed Galamith away but he grabbed her head a circumflex if you don't tell me then I shall force it out from you. What is Aya's secret? A circumflex, he yelled and started pushing his dark power inside her Uwa's soul, establishing a spiritual connection with the use of his darkness that started sucking out all of Uwa's memories. Uwa screaming. Uwa take candies from her pocket. Without thinking she ate one candy. Uwa kicking Galimuth. Don't want he sucking her memories and try to make Galamuth eat the candy, because she ate it. Galimuth sucked one inside himself feeling a terrible fire burning inside him and splitting blood as Aura kicked him back. He jumped away into the above a circumflex curse that little Rinsha, he replied landing near me, and walking back to Matrimona, while I was being helped by Alpha a circumflex no matter, my desire is close to completion. This event here will be finished shortly, Galamith replied. A circumflex I know but we will get to you. I can promise, you won't be able to hide using fake bodies anymore. A circumflex, I replied and faced him. Hey person, Yasumi called to Blaze. How can we release Lady Matrimona from that prison? Aren't you the key to everything? She said as her face barely shows emotion.
A circumflex you were talking about the system goddess, why would we want to do that? She's better off being locked in there. Well she is the matrimona del system. One of the whores of Babylon she's my worst enemy. How about we kill Hera, I replied, looking at Matramona and noticing something odd. The woman was completely different from the ones I meted earlier. She had noble features like an angel, that was corrupted by the darkness of the system. A circumflex she does cute thoda, I replied and analyzed the female's features. She even looked desirable, a rare treat, for someone that personalizes all of the greed and lust. The whores of Babylon were ugly but could use their occultic powers called glamour. I myself a user of occultism and demon fiat fell to the spiritual and God. Was of course immune, but this woman was really beautiful. That's because I am her servant, and I need to get her out of there. She looked a little annoyed at Blaze. You can't just say that you have to kill her just because she's your enemy. If you do, her expression darkened. I'll hunt you down and take your life away, myself. I smiled at the girl's joints and walked over accompanied by Silent Alpha and Omega A Circumflex. Why don't you kill Galamuth and isn't he the one holding her captive? Sorry but I don't know the whole details. I just know that I'll have to something eventually as to me being a key. I remember it being said 75 years ago, during the events that Fred Gallimuth at the time I was a part of the Trinity Force, that tried to prevent this calamity, but it looks we failed. Thought it really did take 75 years for real to meet him again. I guess there are certain developments that cannot be controlled through time and Placia, I answered a circumflex oh you wrong blaze. Times flies differently according to individual perspective. What appeared to be 75 years for you, was 666 thousandths years for me. You see Blaze restarting my research in the physical world after my imprisonment in the spiritual took a lot of effort and research. It wouldn't be possible in the span of a single century. Yes it required careful planning and analysis, scrupulent implementation and modification, restoration and even decoration examination and confirmation. In your case Blaze it was more early necessary to allow you to rest, a 75 years of relaxation, made you ready to fight this war. Thoughts why even you shall be my toy in this game Blizzy, Galamuth replied laughing madly enjoying his superiority over every one of us. Suddenly Misa started running getting out a knife chopper and trying to kill everything and everyone started attacking me while I avoided as she smirked wildly and damn it Misa wake up. A circumflex, I started yelling as she continued her insane attack. Galamis smirked while Alpha tried to punch him, making him avoid the attack. A circumflex you must adore my dear Misa. Corrupted like this, she truly is magnificent. Uh, he replied in the oddest form of ecstasy, I was able to notice trying to avoid being cutted by Misa. This was truly a bizarre fight with the rest of the group residing to being mere spectators. Partially because of the fatigue, but also from the fact that the whole situation was nothing more than a farce, Galamuth as mentioned before used Merely a false body to control his actions. Thus destroying this one wouldn't resolve the battle at all, it was one of these trying situation, that needed to be handled with dot for the casual observator. One not accustomed to the realities of the spiritual world the whole situation would strange and bizarre. But we must remember that the spiritual defiles material logic, the casual behavior in context of this battle was common sense. After all these events for these that are well accustomed with spirituality are just in farce. The god had already implemented safety measures to prevent the situation spiraling out of control. Therefore there wasn't any probability of it ever threading God's creation. The only thing that was to be dealt with was the distribution of the spiritual energy created from this farce. That was Yahweh's and other God's true purpose and obligation. The matter of dealing with Galamuth could be left to anyone, including me and other children, for in reality the whole situation was child's play. Amusing spectacle in which we all were to play our roles till the end. This is the true purpose of adventures, or special events. Life isn't complex virtual reality game after all, governed by programs and artificial intelligence, whether we use this term, or the term spirits, or even if we refer to these as demons or angels. 
we get the same meaning. For everything carries the divine signature of the Creator. In everything we can find the traces of the micro and macro cosmoses that are around us. In ourselves we find the connections to the spiritual. Hence even by writing we create events that can happen in distant futures, and if we're capable of understanding that we may write our own wishes into reality. For the book of life is always open in front of our eyes, we just often do not understand the language in which it's written as it's in very ancient one. Thus all these events were also symbols and in attempts at writing different things into existence. I still continued avoiding Mises stabbing, having it more harder as she increased in speed. Then suddenly she stepped back in the darkness. After a short while we could hear Misa chanting a spell and then rising from the flames a majestic spectacle begun, the orange flames combined with red ones into a tremendous whirlpool formed the big fire bird called Phoenix. The air started heating as it appeared squeeching terrible, while Miss Tika annoyed by this sudden turn of the events directed, her own shadow birds which squeeching felt victims to the fire bird. Misa made him burn everything, while I formed a silver defense barrier around us as Galimuth who avoided Alpha's bunches in a crazy dance-like fight, smirked Avili. I quickly attacked the bird with a warbolic silver energy, that quickly engulfed the bird into a metal-like transparent shape, creating a metal-like statue with a mirror-like surface that started cracking from the heel as the shape exploded freeing the orange bird. The bird suddenly waved its wings creating a massive fire wave. Then it flew in the sky and from there it started sending huge fireballs trying to hit us. While my shield was cracking from the head, Mystica quickly appeared above the fire bird, directing her hand, releasing a web of dark springs that sprouted at the bird. Billion of them formed out of a single string dividing into smaller branches not loosing its strength but increasing as it tied itself to the fire bird, surrounding it with Mystica's characteristic pink aura and trying to drain the bird's energy weakening ID. The phoenix started to be angry burning Mystica's strings, as the fire spread rapidly Mystica herself was unable to avoid it and gotten engulfed in red flames, screaming while her material form was destroyed. While the bird made a fire pentagram and cloned itself twenty times squetching as the clones attacked and broken our shield, making us avoid being hitted. Mystica's ashes fallen to the ground as she abandoned her physical appearance in this plane and retreated to the shadows of Echelion, for a while searching for Galamis' real location. Hey! We gotta get out here now. We'll just lose because of fatigue. Yasumi shouted. That is exactly what the enemy wants. She continued as I jumped to her pushing to the ground avoiding the next attack of these birds. A circumflex you think I don't know that. But he's the one that controls it. Besides we're using different astral bodies now. So the only face she he can inflict on us is the mental one. He tries to traumatize us, but both Yahweh and Alpha are working on breaking the seals in this dimensional trap. Yes it's a trap your matrimony isn't here. This woman in the sphere is just an empty shell. Somehow Gallim has retrieved your dimensional path and redirected it into this enclosed reality. So don't worry, I replied covering Yasumi as the birds inflicted damage on me, feeling the pain of these attacks and being angry at Gallimuth. This can really give us a trauma, because it's sticking me off. Yasumi replied pushing me off, while I shielded us both with a green sphere covering it with a reddish whirlpool energy. A circumflex I know it can, this is his plan he tries to break our mental composition. But its real effects are comparable to a dream. Don't worry we can wake up. But if we do it now we won't know his location the seals Alpha and Yahweh are working on, carry this information. Thoa, D from your true location I believe you know better than us where his main body resides. I replied looking into Yasumi's eyes. A circumflex anyway ones were back there. Try to find you, sir, I added and sat down facing the girl. That stuff. She left the shield and as she started to attack the grim-filled souls once again dot she replied back, I usually see Galamuth in his little laboratory. Experimenting day in and night out. She told me, while I dismantled the shield and looked at her a circumflex and what is he experimenting on? Well I know his purpose already but what can the method he plans to use this time I wonder at I replied back to Yasumi. 
Meanwhile, the dark aura released evaporating into air made Misa wake up and remember that she is good. Confused, she lost the control of the foe Nexus, almost being burned by one. Having Yaw went out interfered to save her in time. Covering the girl in an invisible sphere that quickly was engulfed in fire from the bird, crashing into it deflecting the entire attack into the black blood, that now was awfully calm. But in reality we're drawing massive energy currents inside their molecules, absorbing the power Galamit was lending them, and using it to manifest irregularites in our thoughts. I felt my mind going high wire, my thoughts betraying me with memories of my former defeats. My very soul was being corrupted by intense anger, by rage that was uncontrollable and imaginable. This was Galamal's own hate that fueled me. I looked with red eyes at the world. My very essence was loosing to the darkness. That slowly contaminated my hearth, but there was a burst of light that protected my very inner being. Repelling the darkness from making it leave my soul healing the wounds implanted to me by the material whores. The power of God defeated the dark currents of energy, forcing it to leave my soul and the body I was currently using, much to Galamal's dismay. He needed to retreat having lost this battle as the situation was greatly improving for us. Suddenly out of the blue a dark-haired man entered the stage, dressed in somic and a casual clothings, like a tourist walked calmly, and looked around dressed in a blue Hawaiian shirt and weird trousers. Hmm. He said obviously lost in his thoughts, gazing on the situation from behind his sunglasses. The guy was walking in the ruckus, not minding the events that happened around him. Ignoring the whole situation just as if he was walking throughout a train station, or waiting for a taxi. Yasumi noticed this strange person that was walking around. Hey. She called out to him, What are you doing in here? It's dangerous. Get out of here. She screamed being visibly annoyed as I observed the whole situation, wondering whether the newcomer was our ally or Galamis servant. The man looked at her, not impressed while I walked over to Yasumi a circumflex I am not afraid of, he replied without an effort. Just as if he was extremely bored by the whole situation. Without anyone noticed, or uh, hiding behind trees. She is suffering. She cannot focus. She closed her eyes, try to connect it with Galimuth. Their connection fading little by little, my bond vanished. But it's good news or bad news. I don't have enough power to standing. She replied as the demims and all trees started growing. These were the outposts to Galamit's desires, the dark shadows of existence. Perhaps it were these trees that sucked her Ua's powers from her, as she didn't even notice when they appear. The silver trees that looked like a Christmas trees. Shining and sending out multiple rays of colorful lights as the dark energy was converted into the signals. These signals were carrying Misa's dreams while she dreaming that she is in the Wonderland. But everything there is broken. An evil and she can resolve the problem with her. Special magical knife. Misa opened her eyes, and while remaining in this state of trance, she started attacking the silver trees and everyone around her a circumflex not again. A circumflex I asked as she came attacking at me. But suddenly Misa waked up from that nightmare. And apologized to everyone. But then again something strange happened immediately and she fallen under trance again. A circumflex Galamith is loosing his authority over Miss A. I replied to Yasumi as we both observed the whole situation, while I also eyed the newcomer. Galamith used a lighting flash to throw Alpha away from himself, turning around almost falling to the ground but standing up. He quickly rushed backwards turning back and observing our group. Noticing the newcomer as well it seems this dimension is falling. We have random people or thought forms walking into the scene at last it is my time to leave the stage. Farewell you hopeless fool sir. He honors, turning into you. A showy figure and slowly dissolving into nothingness, as the dimension started shaking a bit. Uru er looked at the trees. It is Yggdrasil. She asked opening a gate to summon a spirit. Come out. Oswald. A spirit come out. It's a small tree that have old man face. He wear a black hard sleeve. What is, priestess? Said Oswald. It is Yggdrasil. Er, Ua asked Oswald. A circumflex another random guy. 
a circumflex, I asked surprised mocking over to Ua, uh, while the dimension started shaking. A circumflex, what's going on Yahweh? A circumflex, I asked the old philosopher. A circumflex, the dimension is falling, it won't last long, Blizzy, he replied, while at the same time Ua uh, was questioning her servant. Random energies were released from the forms they assumed for this dimension making the black blood evaporate, and the whirlpool that we were inside dissipate, the sphere containing Metramona evaporated as well. As the real system goddess was trapped somewhere else, Misa walked in circles confused by the events screaming angrily. I looked at the above noticing a blue glass-like structure were revealing itself as small cracks started appearing. Red energy fueled these cracks forcing them wider, the dimension was slowly crumbling. A circumflex that ain't good. We're going to get sent back sooner, I replied looking at Yasumi, hoping this cute girl will find us once we return to the original plane. This whole situation seemed like a dream, and indeed it was a very realistic dream. The random guy was wandering around and observing the situation interested A circumflex what is going on. A circumflex, he asked. Super Sindus, making me almost lose my balance a circumflex you gotta be kidding me I replied citing, are you nuts? Yasumi protested. You just show up all of a sudden and just try to act cool and this is the reaction we get. A circumflex, young lady you walked into a battlefield. Can you please tell us your name and the world you hail from? Are you a newly departed? A circumflex, Yahweh replied walking over to us looking at the newcomer. The young man looked at her and replied a circumflex maybe I can help you out. You're late. Real late. She sighed. While I continued gazing at the young man a circumflex if you want to help us tell your name first okay. I pointed at Yahweh and continued talking to the newcomer a circumflex do you know who this man is? A circumflex I asked waiting for the reply. A circumflex, you are talking to me. A circumflex, the man replied, while I started to get angry. A circumflex, no. I'm talking to your mother. A circumflex, I replied annoyed. A circumflex, calm down. Calm down, I believe he has his reasons to be hurry up, Yahweh replied, trying to calm us down. A circumflex, anyone tell me what is going on here. A circumflex, the man shouted out, very confused while Yahweh walked over to him. A circumflex, my name is Yahweh, I'm the most highest priest in the Megi civilization, I'm the acting god of the society, the representer of his will in the material world. I'm a ruler of both the material and the spiritual, one of the most high-ranked gods that serve, the one god and the supreme ruler of the eternal Megi civilization. The girl you were talking to is Yasumi. The other two girls that are standing there are Ua and her sister Ayab. The white-haired boy who's facing you at the moment is called Blaze Mast. That is a name he prefers to be used in reference to himself. And how about you, Laid? A circumflex, Yahweh explained and asked the man. A circumflex, you want to know my name? Fine, it's Sajuki. I looked at him smirking. A circumflex, Sajuki, you say? That reminds me of a manga character, I replied smiling a circumflex a very old Onia, I finished. Hoping that the guy won't tell me his name was Sajuke Uchijia, from Naruto Manga. A circumflex Selzer. Sajuke, Selzer that's who I am, the man replied, as we continued our inquiry. A circumflex okay Sajuke Selzer, why are you here? A circumflex, I asked looking at him. A circumflex, I don't know yet. What I am doing here and why? A circumflex, he continued asking. A circumflex, are you a departed spirit? I mean did you die just now? Yahweh asked looking at the man, while I sighted a circumflex he really is a newcomer. This guy died and got into this place. It means that this dimension is slowly deconstructing. But while he's here we cannot leave. Damned Galamatha, I replied talking to Yasumi, a bit annoyed. A circumflex, but many ways it looks like there is a war going on. The man replied as we continued staring at him. A circumflex, yes we're in the middle of the eternal war fighting the forces of Satan Dark Lord Galamatha, Yahweh replied. While we still wondered why the sky was here. Was it to stop us from leaving? I wondered. Annoyed by the whole situation, 
and this unexpected visitor, I looked at him and then asked a very important question. A circumflex where were you before you found Yari self here Sajuke? A circumflex, I asked looking at him. A circumflex, heavens, uh, he replied making y'all were laughed. A circumflex, oh I see now you're the messenger I was expecting. A circumflex, y'all were replied a circumflex from what celestial sphere you hail from. There are nine celestial spheres of heavens. These celestial spheres are what you would describe as higher dimension. Now we are Nekelian. This is the lowest spiritual realm. It is here that dreams are stored and every thought materializes and conceptualizes. Echelion is the gateway and the sustenizer. The three perfect planes. This is the astral plane that connects to heavens, hell and the material world. Allowing entities from these planes to interact in a neutral zone. Thoughts why this place is called the gate or the borderline of the worlds in God's research field. Humans enter this world when dreaming in order to keep them safe. The spiritual border is like a closed world. While a human can experience heavens by having contents of the true heavens transformed into this zone, they're not permitted to enter them until they pass into the spiritual realm. As the true heavens would be too intense for them, the same goes for angels who are to pure forms and need to stop by at Echelion to understand the concept of materialization, demons as well. Thought not all angels or demons are capable or willing to leave their respective planes, just like humans don't actually plan on leaving the material plane. This is the trinity projection that combines and sustains all the worlds. Echelion is God's frequency. So from what spur you hail from? A circumflex, Yahweh explained answering the question. A circumflex I don't know why but I can't clearly remember. A circumflex, Sajuke replied while I smirked a circumflex well why don't I tell you something interesting heavens never look the same, but it is an interesting place, we born from the material world can really become astonished by the marvels of the true heavens. The first thing you feel upon entering that plane is the intense feeling of warmness and love. You find Yari self in the surroundings that express this like a colorful dream. Depending on what you expect you might see bright colors, a field or anything you ever dreamed of. However true angels the ones living there don't exist as personalities or forms but Morelia function, they are like written programs. In other words it's the first time you're self-conscious of yourself in a pseudo-physical form. This is truly different than being a spirit isn't it? I visited heavens at times to get recharged but it's not my thing I prefer the Echelion more in bringing out the spiritual qualities as forms I can interact if I would describe the heavens or hell in the form Sajuke knows it it's warmness of a heartbeat hell is cold it's terrifying and scary so take your time okay I replied and looked at Yahweh a circumflex basically to translate it to our level both heavens and hell are states of souls thoughts all am always connected to them in my soul, it's where my power and self-confidence comes, the heaven is the source of light while the hell is the source of the darkness. The experience of both hell and heaven depends on us, fear is the state of mind. The same love. These planes are as intense as our emotions or experience made them. But the interesting point is how the experience is like for a being that always existed there. The true spiritual angels or demons that are born in heaven in hell and an interacting in material world have no experience of personality thoughts why they wait for humans to call on them and their love and you are listening to an audio file provided by the Free Internet Culture Organization. Steniza or Gears Zainaga, Ayano Chindi, Dawn Van Pham Basami Singal Quotzi, Princess Yuki Nyan, Titan Kronos 9, Dorothy Kirilova, Eunice Ria Chikawa, Mogani Shin Kim Kyu Jong Oska, Bogdanescu Anki Maria, Sina Kaminiwa, Sajuke Uchicha. Dedicated in memory of my grandmother. Irene who died in 2002, may God bless her and give her a peaceful rest. Blaze Master Eternal War Written between 2011 to 2012 With the help of my friends Matthew 16 28 A circumflex I can guarantee this truth Some people who are standing here will not die until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. A circumflex
a circumflex a circumflex one distant star that shines with the power of God celebrating the life in the universe home to warmth one distant star that shines so far away in space engulfed in the cold darkness spreading its warmth to planets every plant and every animal carries its light in its own core Oh the distant star I send you a prayer from the coldest depth of universe is a beloved creation of God made to resemble him please continue to give us the warm we need dot a circumflex a circumflex a circumflex I dedicate this work of fiction to our beloved creator master of all that is seen and unseen the one that is watching over us from the past and continues even today the creator of our free will the true master God May the light of knowledge and love be fall on us living. May we be blessed in participating in your holy work and may my small and insignificant attempt at describing your glory. May the small fiction world be blessed from the heavens and continue under your divine inspiration. I want to dedicate this work to the Father and Son and to the Holy Spirit. I ask you for help and guidance. I also ask you to acknowledge the works of our minds and heart in your favor. A circumflex a circumflex a circumflex in the times of ancient evil 106 chosen people will save the world. You are listening to an audio file provided by the Free Internet Culture Organization. Staniza Ogiers, Zainaga, Ayano Chindi, Dawn Van Vampasami Single Quote Z, Princess Yuki Nyan, Titan Kronos 9. Dorothy Kirilova, Eunice Riachi Kalwa, Mogani Shin Kim Kyu Jongoska, Bogdanescu Anki Maria, Sina Kaminiwa, Sajuke Uchicha. Dedicated in memory of my grandmother, Irene, who died in 2002. May God bless her and give her a peaceful rest. Blaze Master Eternal War. Written between 2011 to 2012. With the help of my friends. Matthew 16:28, A circumflex I can guarantee this truth. Some people who are standing here will not die until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. A circumflex A circumflex A circumflex One distant star that shines with the power of God, celebrating the life in the universe, home to warmth. One distant star that shines so far away in space, engulfed in the cold darkness spreading its warmth to planets, every plant and every animal carries its light in its own core. Oh the distant star I send you a prayer from the coldest depth of universe is a beloved creation of God made to resemble him please continue to give us the warm we need. A circumflex a circumflex a circumflex I dedicate this work of fiction to our beloved creator master of all that is seen and unseen the one that is watching over us from the past and continues even today. The creator of our free will. The true master, God. May the light of knowledge and love be fall on us living. May we be blessed in participating in your holy work and may my small and insignificant attempt at describing your glory. May the small fiction world be blessed from the heavens and continue under your divine inspiration. I want to dedicate this work to the Father and Son and to the Holy Spirit. I ask you for help and guidance. I also ask you to acknowledge the works of our minds and heart in your favor. A circumflex a circumflex a circumflex in the times of ancient evil 106 chosen people will save the world. A circumflex Calamith is loosing his authority over Misa. A circumflex I replied to Yasumi as we both observed the whole situation, while I also eyed the newcomer. Calamith used a lighting flash to throw Alpha away from himself, turning around almost falling to the ground but standing up, he quickly rushed backwards turning back and observing our group. Noticing the newcomer as well it seems this dimension is falling. We have random people or thought forms walking into the scene at last it is my time to leave the stage. Farewell you hopeless fool so he honors turn being into you a showy figure and slowly dissolving into nothingness as the dimension started shaking a bit. Uru looked at the trees it is Yggdrasil. She asked opening a gate to summon a spirit come out. Oswald. A spirit come out. It's a small tree that have old man face. He wear a black hard sleeve. What it is, priestess? Said Oswald. It is Yggdrasil. Urua asked Oswald. A circumflex another random guy. 
a circumflex, I asked surprise mocking over to her, Ua, while the dimension started shaking. A circumflex, what's going on y'all with? A circumflex, I asked the old philosopher, a circumflex, the dimension is falling, it won't last long, Blizzy, he replied, while at the same time Ua was questioning her servant. Random energies were released from the forms they assumed for this dimension, making the black blood evaporate, and the whirlpool that we were inside dissipate, the sphere containing Metramona evaporated as well. As the real system goddess was trapped somewhere else, Misa walked in circles confused by the event screaming angrily. I looked at the above noticing a blue glass-like structure were revealing itself as small cracks started appearing. Red energy fuel of these cracks forcing them wider, the dimension was slowly crumbling. A circumflex that ain't good. We're going to get sent back sooner, I replied looking at Yasumi, hoping this cute girl will find us once we return to the original plane. This whole situation seemed like a dream, and indeed it was a very realistic dream. The random guy was wandering around and observing the situation interested A circumflex what is going on. A circumflex, he asked, super sinus, making me almost lose my balance. A circumflex, you gotta be kidding me, I replied citing, are you nuts? Yasumi protested. You just show up all of a sudden and just try to act cool and this is the reaction we get. A circumflex, young lady, you walked into a battlefield. Can you please tell us your name and the world you hail from? Are you a newly departed? A circumflex, y'all were replied walking over to us looking at the newcomer. The young man looked at her and replied a circumflex maybe I can help y'all. You're late. Real late. She sighed. While I continued gazing at the young man a circumflex if you wanna help us tell your name first okay. I pointed at y'all were and continued talking to the newcomer a circumflex do you know who this man is? A circumflex I asked waiting for the reply. A circumflex, you are talking to me. A circumflex, the man replied, while I started to get angry. A circumflex no. I'm talking to your mother. A circumflex I replied annoyed. A circumflex calm down. Calm down I believe he has his reasons to be hurry up, y'all were replied, trying to calm us down. A circumflex anyone tell me what is going on here. A circumflex, the man shouted out, very confused while Yahweh walked over to him. A circumflex, my name is Yahweh, I'm the most highest priest in the Megigivlisation, I'm the acting god of the society, the representer of his will in the material world. I'm a ruler of both the material and the spiritual, one of the most high-ranked gods that serve, the one god and the supreme ruler of the eternal Megigivlisation. The girl you were talking to is Yasumi. The other two girls that are standing there are Ua and her sister I The white-haired boy who's facing you at the moment is called Blaze Mast. That is a name he prefers to be used in reference to himself. And how about you, Laid? A circumflex, Yahweh explained and asked the man. A circumflex, you want to know my name? Fine, it's Sajuki. I looked at him smirking. A circumflex, Sajuki, you say? That reminds me of a manga character, I replied smiling a circumflex a very old Onia, I finished. Hoping that the guy won't tell me his name was Sajuke Uchuchua, from Naruto manga. A circumflex Selzer. Sajuke, Selzer that's who I am, the man replied, as we continued our inquiry. A circumflex okay Sajuke Selzer, why are you here? A circumflex, I asked looking at him. A circumflex, I don't know yet. What I am doing here and why? A circumflex, he continued asking. A circumflex, are you a departed spirit? I mean did you die just now? Yahweh asked looking at the man, while I sighted a circumflex he really is a newcomer. This guy died and got into this place. It means that this dimension is slowly deconstructing. But while he's here we cannot leave. Damned Galamoutha, I replied talking to Yasumi, a bit annoyed. A circumflex, but many ways it looks like there is a war going on. The man replied as we continued staring at him. A circumflex, yes we're in the middle of the eternal war fighting the forces of Satan Dark Lord Galamoutha, Yahweh replied. While we still wondered why the sky was here. Was it to stop us from leaving? I wondered. Annoyed by the whole situation, 
and this unexpected visitor, I looked at him and then asked a very important question. A circumflex where were you before you found Yari self here Sajuke? A circumflex, I asked looking at him. A circumflex, heaven sir, he replied making y'all were laughed. A circumflex, oh I see now you're the messenger I was expecting. A circumflex, y'all were replied a circumflex from what celestial sphere you hail from. There are nine celestial spheres of heavens. These celestial spheres are what you would describe as higher dimension. Now we are Nekelian. This is the lowest spiritual realm. It is here that dreams are stored and every thought materializes and conceptualizes. Echelion is the gateway and the sustenizer. The three perfect planes. This is the astral plane that connects to heavens, hell and the material world. Allowing entities from these planes to interact in a neutral zone. Thoughts why this place is called the gate or the borderline of the worlds in God's research field. Humans enter this world when dreaming in order to keep them safe. The spiritual border is like a closed world. While a human can experience heavens by having contents of the true heavens transformed into this zone, they're not permitted to enter them until they pass into the spiritual realm. As the true heavens would be to enchant for them, the same goes for angels who are to pure forms and need to stop by at Echelion to understand the concept of materialization, demons as well. Thought not all angels or demons are capable or willing to leave their respective planes, just like humans don't actually plan on leaving the material plane. This is the trinity projection that combines and sustains all the worlds. Echelion is God's frequency. So from what for you hail from? A circumflex, Yahweh explained answering the question. A circumflex I don't know why but I can't clearly remember. A circumflex, Sajuke replied while I smirked a circumflex well why don't I tell you something interesting heavens never look the same, but it is an interesting place, we born from the material world can really become astonished by the marvels of the true heavens. The first thing you feel upon entering that plane is the intense feeling of warmness and love. You find Yari self in the surroundings that express this like a colorful dream. Depending on what you expect you might see bright colors, a field or anything you ever dreamed of. However to Rue angels the ones living there don't exist as personalities or forms but Morelia function, they're like written programs. In other worlds it's the first time you are self-conscious of yourself in a pseudo-physical form. This is truly different than being a spirit isn't it? I visited heavens at times to get recharged but it's not my thing I prefer the Echelion more in bringing out the spiritual qualities as forms I can interact. If I would describe the heavens or hell in the form Sajuke knows it it's warmness of a heartbeat. Hell is cold it's scary thing and scary. So take your time Oka, I replied and looked at Yahweh. A circumflex basically to translate it to our level both heavens and hell are states of souls thoughts all am always connected to them in my soul, it's where my power and self-confidence comes, the heaven is the source of light while the hell is the source of the darkness. The experience of both hell and heaven depends on us, fear is the state of mind. The same love. These planes are as intense as our emotions or experience made them. But the interesting point is how the experience is like for a being that always existed there. The true spiritual angels or demons that are born in heaven and hell and then interacting in material world have no experience of personality thoughts why they wait for humans to call on them in their love and anger and pull them out absorbing into their personalities they learn and grow. Am I right y'all with a circumflex? I replied finishing my explanation. Well y'all when you did a circumflex yes you're right that was a splendid explanation Blizzy. Y'all we complimented me. A circumflex I really don't know why you guys are fighting but I feel like helping y'all. Sajuke replied as his wings groan while he looked at us continuing. A circumflex I don't have time to talk. Tell me something to do. My blood boils for a fight. A circumflex Sajuke replied and was preparing to fight a circumflex calm yourself celestial warrior try relaxing the enemy has fleed us. My orders for you are to travel with this group and help them in their fight a uh, Yahweh replied and looked at the young angel dot a circumflex so what should I do? A circumflex Sajuke replied looking at Yahweh. A circumflex protect and guard this group from harma. Yahweh replied while I bowed to the being. 
A circumflex it's an honor working with Yao, I replied bowing. Sajuke crossed arms and smiled a circumflex that's too easy, the young angel replied while Yahweh smiled a circumflex don't get too proud of yourself, once you experience the material nothing is never the same, I believe the most hardest trial is starting for you now, you have been casted from a perfect world into a very complex one. Soon you'll come to realize how hard this is segment truly is, Yahweh explained. While Sajuke innocently laughed at a circumflex don't underestimate others flings this crossroad is just the beginning you are to follow us into the material plane, thoughts where the real difficulties start uh, I replied pointing it out, while Yahweh looked at us and suddenly hit the floor with his walking stick as it created a vibration from which red flames started forming and engulfing the floor, making it grow and us feel the warm sensation it made. A circumflex it's time to leave now are you ready Sajuke? A circumflex I asked looking at the others a circumflex Yasumi remember to find us Sajuke your first a segment will be to teleport Yasumi to our location uh, I replied and continued observing the flames as they grew in size. The decaying blood was destroyed by high temperature boiling terrible producing dark smoke that fueled the area while we ourselves started choking a bit as the smoke started feeling hot. The temperature making me sweet and starting to be uncomfortable as the pressure increased, while the brightness of the flames blinded me terribly. The wines that were engulfed by these flames started making terrible noises, while the flames themselves quickly surrounded us and engulfed burning our beauties, making me try to resist it and scream as I looked at the bodies and everybody engulfed in flames, creating an intense pressure like a coat. A circumflex calm down you going home yeah. Alpha's voice was heard in my mind as I continued observing the situation, as the image of flames was distorted and slowly faded away while the pain reached its highest limits and suddenly disappeared. I opened my eyes hearing the sounds of water and looked around, noticing that I seated on that fountain in Aura's room. Noticing how the chaotic structure changed and seeing how I smiled back to me. I was back in her room in that strange skyscraper. A circumflex were back, uh, I replied and slowly stood up walking to the two girls. Sighting and breathing calmly I enjoyed each step I made. I was back home, in the material world I belonged to. Despite me not liking it, this was the world I always belonged to. The floor at Galamis Temple continued to shine, transporting magical energies into its surface. I knew finally what was Galamis' maddening ambition. The destruction of the border and corruption of the gods' creation, we needed to move out fast. 